expectation. Amen. Honorable members, we want to greet all of you and start with the obituaries that we have for us, uh, before us, and then take a moment to remember all the departed souls from this world who will forever remain in our thoughts and will be missed beyond measure. I will start with Professor James Stephen Mziligaz Kumalo, composer and Professor Emeritus of African Languages in the University of the Vet Vates Ranch, born here in Guazulu Natal. Mr. Daniel Mabuyakulu, the former provincial chairperson of SADU in Guazulu Natal and the former mayor and ex co member of Emachuba District Municipality. Ms. Tandi Matiwane, a staff member in the ANC caucus who has been in the service for many years. Mr. Geoff Makubo, the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, who was also the chairperson of the ANC's Greater Johannesburg region. Mr. Michael Zuma, who was a younger brother to the former president of the Republic, Mr. J.G. Zuma. Dr. Baldwin C. Paul Ben Ngubane a medical doctor and an astute politician who held multiple positions in the provincial and national government. Dr. Ngubane had served on the board of the SABC and was also at some point a chairperson of the land bank, among other roles. He had also been, prior to... Uh, uh, Prior to joining ESCOM, he has also been a South Africa's ambassador to Japan. At some point, he was awarded the Grand Cotton of the Japanese Order of the Rising Sun for his contributions for the, to the enhancement of the relationship and the cooperation in science and technology between Japan and South Africa. Dr. Ngubane served as the Minister of Arts, Culture, Science and Technology in the national government and has also been the premier of KwaZulu-Natal. He was also part of those who served in Kodesa and were part of dealing with the constitutional principles and constitution making on behalf of the Ingata Freedom Party. The 72 plus people who have passed on in South Africa, especially particularly in KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng, as a result of the ongoing violence and looting that is taking place. All citizens of this province who have passed on in the recent times as a result of COVID 19 related complications, any other causes, as well as those who perished on the roads. Honorable members, let us now observe a moment of silence to honor all the departed souls. Yanga imi pefum lo yabo inga pumla inguna pagate. Honorable members and staff, I want us to remain vigilant during the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please continue to be ambassadors who observe and adhere to protocols at all times, so that we may assist government's initiatives to curb the spread of the virus and be of assistance to help practitioners and facilities by reducing the burden that has been placed on them. I also have the following announcements to make. The first one is regarding an executive statement by the Premier. Honorable members, before we proceed, it is imperative that I make an announcement on a matter that is on the outer paper for today. The Premier has written to the Speaker requesting that he be allowed to make an executive statement to this House in terms of Rule 104 on recent incidents in the province due to the gravity and extent of these incidents. It is imperative that we as a legislature deal extensively and comprehensively 
and provided with all of the necessary information relating to the efforts of the Executive Council uh, to address the situation. So it is then in that regard that the Premier yeah. will table an executive statement to us. Honourable Member, I remind that that order. Thank you. Honourable Members, I remind that this virtual sitting will be conducted in terms of the rules for virtual meetings, read with our existing standing rules. In terms of Rule 6 of the Rules for Virtual Meetings, the quorum requirement for virtual sittings of the House is as provided for in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and the Standing Rules of the Legislature. Standing Rule 44 of the Standing Rules provides that at least one third of all the members of the Legislature must be patient to constitute a plenary meeting of the Legislature. Rule 44.2 further states that a majority of the members of the legislature must be present before a vote may be taken on a bill. The rules for virtual meetings also define present as follows. Present means the attendance of a member in a virtual meeting by electronic means in a manner that allows the member to join and participate in the meeting. Another announcement, honorable members, is that following the recent unrest and looting of economy of the economic uh, infrastructure in the province of KwaZulu Natal, the program committee has met this morning to deal with a program of the legislature to undertake an oversight visit to all districts to oversee and speak to stakeholders on the extent of the damage and also be afforded an opportunity of having to interact with the communities in line with what the president has announced two days ago as a role to be played by the members of provincial legislatures in our instance, members of parliament, councillors, and leaders of political parties. Further to that, the program committee has also agreed that members of the provincial legislature will be expected to be active in their constituencies speaking to stakeholders, gathering more information and also shape the way that must be taken in rebuilding the province henceforth. These honorable members will be followed. This multi-party oversight visit, honorable members, will be followed by a tabling of the report to be discussed in the sitting that will take place on the Thursday that follows, which is the 22nd of July by this house, where we will be able to shape the move forward to take the province of KwaZulu-Natal out of the current predicament. Honorable members, the apologies that I have received is the one from Honorable N. Similane, MEC for Health, who will leave early due to a government engagement. Amidst all the difficulties that we have, I want to then take this opportunity to wish belated birthday to the following members. Honorable S.M. Sonjita on the 15th, who was born on the 15th of June. Honorable N.N.C.P. Lasapeta on the 16th of June. Honorable A.G. Mabena on the 16th of June. Honorable N. Dube Mube on the 1st of July, Honorable S. E. Somuga on the 2nd of July, and Honorable P. A. T. N. Mutelezi on the 10th of July. I hope you had a pleasant day that you served, I mean, that you celebrated serving the people who elected you. May your dearest wishes be fulfilled now and in the future. Honorable members, may we move to the next item, which is announcements or reports by the Premier. Honorable Speaker, uh, thank you. Uh, greetings to you, Honorable Speaker, members of this uh, August House. Honorable Speaker, we stand to present the report of condolences. We wish to send our deepest condolences to the bereaved family of our former Premier, 
uh, Dr. Ngubane, who passed on early this week. We wish to wish the family of Mr. Ngubane uh, comfort uh, during this very uh, challenging time. Equally, we have received the report that Mr. Michael Zuma, the younger brother to former President Zuma, passed on. We wish to send our deepest condolences to the Ngamalala family. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Premier. May we then move to item five, which is tabling. The first tabling is the KZN Legislature Budget Performance in Year Monitoring Report for the month of May 2021. And also the monitoring report for the month of June 2021. The Ad Hoc Committee on Investigations third quarterly report of the Ad Hoc Committee. The Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs tables the following. Uku District uh, Municipality Oversight Report for the 2019-2020 Financial Year. Zululand District Municipality Oversight Report for 2019-2020. Zululand District Municipality 2019-2020 Annual Report, Zululand District Municipality Assessment Report, and many local municipality service deliver and budget implementations plan for 21-22, Pongola Local Municipality Annual Report for 2019-2020, and Dwe Local Municipality Annual Report for 2019-2020. The Ad Hoc Committee on Land Restitution, Complaints, and Other Related Matters tables the report for Amachuba and Zululand districts. Honorable members, is there a tabling that we might have missed that needs to be recorded? Thank you, seeing that there is none. We'll move to item six on the order paper. Formal motions or notices by the Chief Whip. Honorable Chief Whip. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker. There are no formal motions and notices from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, the debate, uh, the orders of the day, which is item seven on the order paper, we will start with the debate and the report by the MEC of Health for the status of the TB epidemic in the province of Basel Natal for each district municipality and also including a TB in it. The first speaker for seven minutes is Honorable LXH Shongwama Lala of the ANC. Honorable Speaker. Honor Thank you. You can continue, Honorable Member. Honorable Mazala Songwa. We stand at a very difficult time, Honorable Speaker members of the House, Honorable Prima, and your executive in the history of our nation. There's a great need for self-introspection, soul healing, and dealing with the underlying symptoms of deprivation, discontent, and continuous injustices, just to mention a few. As Vumela in Zondo, Somlomo is laule. As one's Vumela with Lugana Gue Tunges Limi, Ubagu Sense in Ekisa, Kubulale no Unane, Obabam Kulu Abagle. As one's with Lulegu Hola Bantu, Nuglaula Bandaba set him Begangaga, Genga in Kizioze to Ezimbi, Ezitwele Amakubu Nonya, 
ukuwula kanye nomoya wokuthakathi lesi isikhathi samaqiniso the natives need to talk and determine their own future that which must stand must stand and that which must be shaken and sifted must be shaken and sifted isizwe sethu somlomo sidinga ukwelashwa amanxeba avuza igas in the book of john 8 verse 32 jesus says and you know the truth and the truth will set you free people are waiting for truth once they know it they'll be liberated for now the slaves may not stop Nimandunguru, who once reflected on the life of President Kambarage Nyerere, once said, How we wish you were here, Nyerere. Thanks for your patience and for making us persevere. But dear Mualimu, why didn't you tell us, expose and prepare us for the turmoil and struggles that have now engulfed us? Why didn't you continue to build ourselves, our capabilities, and our attitudes. Today, Honorable Speaker, I perceive that most of our young people, women, the destitute, and everyone else, the natives in particular, are asking these questions to Madiba, Madiba Omde. They are asking to Mbeki, Umzizi Omhle. They are asking to Namalan. They are equally asking to Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa. Namhlanje sizohlanga nokuxoxa ngesifo esibizwa ngesifo sofuba. Esesibulela abantu abaninga kakhulu emzansi Afrika, e Afrika kwaZulunatal. Ngenxa yokungazi, ngenxa ukuthi abanye abasemukeli, nangenxa ukuthi abanye bayesaba ukukhuluma ngaso ngoba ume uke wathi umuntu one TB mpagati uyakwas. Honorable Speaker, Honorable MC, Honorable Members of the House, I stand here as a survivor of tuberculosis. I am strong and I know exactly how does a TB patient suffers. The strategic outcomes of TB since the dawn of democracy have always been about increasing new client treatment success rate and over the years the province of KwaZulu Natal has improved such that in the strategic plan and or the APP 2018-19 going forward the success rate has been pitched at 90% between 87 and 90% or even more this was done to align with the NIDS Honorable Speaker, in the 2018-19 annual report, it was reported that the retention to care for TB remains a challenge with a loss-to-follow-up rate of 6.7%, up, up from 4% in 2018-19 as a result of resource constraints with the TB program. TB death rate has also increased. This is in, in 2018-19, Honorable Members and Honorable Speaker. It has increased from 3.2 to 6.2. We have about 3,593 uh, TB patients dying. One of the challenges that are captured by the Department of Health, and we may all attest to this, is the problem of resources and the problems with infrastructure, infrastructural challenges and capturing and processing of data with a change over the time. Net information systems have been hindered, have hindered progress as provincial reports are not necessarily available so that data can be captured on parallel systems. This is something we see just across in all districts, including at Teguini. Quickly going to 2019-20, Honorable Speaker, because the data for 2020-21 is not necessarily available. So I had to go back just to cause us to reflect uh, correctly on the state of TB. But a lot has been done. A lot more needs to be done. Most of it must come from us, clients, patients, families, and communities. In the 2019-20 annual report, it is reported, it was reported that there is an indirect tenuous relationship between the number of TB cases 
laws to follow up and the number of TB deaths within districts. One school of thought postulates that the higher the number of laws to follow up cases, the lower the death rate. The rationale behind this thought process is that if a patient is lost to follow up, they are not in the system, and therefore their death is not identified, is not notified, is not recorded as a, a death t- as a TB death. The converse to this thought, honourable speaker, will therefore also apply if there is a high number of TB deaths threshold. The, if there is a, a, a high number of TB deaths threshold, b a lower number of lost to follow up cases as patients will die within the public health system. Examples of this can be seen in Herikwala. At a particular point in time, it crossed over and it pivoted to a point that it surpassed a tequini. In Kinga A Ningi, Espegene Nazo, Nesipo Sofuba, Som Lomo Nabashonisho, Uguti Ama Resources, Asem Yangu Nova Health, Awan Nele, Iga Kulgazi, Abantu be data capturing, Nabantu Kovo, Abafisi Uguti Bakunu Megesi for Sofu. Una Matuba Maningi, Esla Segele Wona, especially at a PhD level, due to poor implementation of the TB case identification and follow up register that has led to delayed case identification and diagnosis. In other instances, patients are presenting late at health facilities. Hence, I was so elated when the MEC said in her report he is cajoling members of, of the legislature to become ambassadors of TB education. We are with you, Makuja. We have taken the call. We want to expose more people on education about tuberculosis. That it is not a death sentence. You can still live with TB and even live much more longer. One of the things that I want to raise as I draw to the close is the necess- is the, a, a, the, the reasoning behind good health and wellness. I think one of the things that we need to do, and it was not necessarily mentioned in the report of the MSC, is the emphasis on healthy eating. We need to ensure that our people at this time, most importantly, they eat well. And if you have TB, you need to rest. People need to wash hands often. Honorable member, your time has about clean health. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of the House. Thank you, Honorable Songwa Mazala. The next member is the Honorable N.J. Nguanyana of the IFP for 10 minutes. Honorable members, I have been alerted though through the private means by members that there was no face of the Honorable Songwa Mazala. I want to remind members that you also must project on the camera. I apologize to Honorable members for that. Honorable N.J. Nguanyana, 10 minutes in Tlonich. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the IFP is concerned that despite being preventable and curable, tuberculosis remains one of the deadliest infectious diseases in our country and in KwaZulu Natal in particular. It is a huge cause for concern that our province is the epicenter of tuberculosis epidemic, which have made the World Health Organization to classify South Africa as one of 14 countries that have an exceptionally high burden of susceptible TB, other types of TB, and HIV co-infection and multiple drug resistance. We, however, applaud the efforts by the Department of Health for prioritizing the TB treatment, resulting on TB outcomes to substantially improve over the 10-year period from a 58% treatment success rate in 2009 to 81.1% in 2019 for successful TB, COVID-19 impact on the TB fight. The province still has a big task in its hands of ensuring 100% success rate for all TB outcomes, especially the, during this time when we are also facing the COVID-19 pandemic that continues to destroy many families during the current third wave. We have to do all possible to prevent TB, build mechanism that force defaulted to stick to the medication. We have, sa- we have to save lives. We welcome the KZN strategy for TB. However, we note that advent of COVID-19 
derailed TV, HIV, and STI programs for the greater part of 2020 as resources, financial, human, etc., that are normally used to fight these diseases were fully committed in the COVID-19 war, making it impractical to manage and champion multiple diseases at the, at the same time. Patients defaulting on their medication. As the IFP, we believe that to improve the success rates, the department runs various traditional and social media campaigns and edu- education programs that will emphasize the importance of taking TB medication. This is a lifelong commitment that requires patients to adhere to their prescribed treatment to prevent the disease spread. Our health system needs to be equipped with resources that will deal with those who fail to take prescribed anti-drug for two months or more after starting their treatment, as this undermines the efforts by our healthcare to save lives. This requires all of us as communities, families, government, and healthcare providers to work closely in trying to play part on this KZN strategy presented by the MEC. An integrated working relationship will save more people as it will stop TB from infecting other people in communities. Defaulters put the population at high risk of TB infection, therefore failure to attend TB care and take medication within recommended intervals results in increased viral burden at the individual community as it is a potential driver of widespread transmission of the virus. It is not shocking that the loss to follow up and death rate at, at a high in our province at 10%, at 10.7% and 7.5% respectively. This calls for implementation of advanced community tracking and tracing programs in which patients with missed visits are traced through phones or home address visits. (laughs) Social and economical factors. It is also evident that there are difficult social economic factors results into many patients defaulting in their medication. Some patients from rural poor areas and townships complain about lack of money for transportation to nearest healthcare facilities. It is, an, it is undisputed that there are people that who are still subjected to traveling long distances due to the failure by the Department of Health to build clinics in their respective areas and therefore seek people to travel long distances to seek medical help. Communities such as Entababom, a community in Yingotu, still have to pay a lot of money to get to the nearest clinic which is in another area far from them. Mobile clinics should be made available and easily accessible to a convenient time for all members of the community if we are serious about ensuring that people do not lapse on TB and lifelong treatment. We call on the department to build more clinics and bring healthcare closer to the people. The IFP is also aware of the increasing poverty, unemployment, and inequality levels in our province and people not take lifelong medication if they live in poverty, struggling to put the food on the table. Our people are unable to afford basic services due to these factors, including transport fares. Government should encourage the self-help and self-reliance programs where communities get to work for themselves in the formal market through small businesses and entrepreneurship to make living. There seems to be issues of food security and uncertainty as prices of food have more than doubled and continue to rise daily. We are currently experiencing local unrest throughout the province, looting of businesses, banning of trucks, businesses shutting down, and a lot of retrenchment. It is high time that government encourage communities to start one home, one garden programs and, and, 
and for government to, a, to create conducive environment for economic recovery that can create jobs to reduce the high rate of unemployment that contributes immensely to poor people who are sick to default medication. Other contribution factors include the extreme consumption of alcohol and cigarettes in KwaZulu Natal. The alcohol abuse is catastrophic as many defaults and eventually lose their, their lives throughout having paid attention to their lives. The IFP believes that there needs to be a campaign drive in the health ministry for a drug and alcohol addiction throughout the country. The IFP believes that interventions are needed to reduce rates of alcohol abuse and subsequently alcohol-related consequences. Case certain strategy for TB control. As the IFP, we support the case certain strategy for TB control in province as it speaks about involving many different stakeholders. We hope what contained in the strategy will be fully implemented. We emphasize that the private sector must also come on board, but we are pleased that sectors such as agriculture and mining are included in the strategy. In conclusion, Chairperson, Mega Speaker, urgent action must be taken to provide wider access to life saving preventive tools, tests, and treatments if we want to reach our objective of ending TB by 2030. We need to redouble our efforts across prevention, diagnosis, and treatment to ensure that affordable, simpler, and adapted solutions are made available in low- and middle-income communities, particularly for the people who need them the most. Further, the fight against TB must continue even during this time of COVID-19 pandemic, which has a devastating, a devastating effect on our well-being and healthcare system. Umsebe Indala singobe ukufa siphile sikhubeke siyephambili angithokoze dadu wethu somlomo ngithokoza kakhulu Yabonga mhloniswa ngi mhloniswa uNkwanyana The next speaker for 5 minutes for DA is the honorable Dr R Berana Doctor Thank you speaker it truly feel surreal debating today on the tuberculosis status report. All the while, the continuous looting and instability in certain areas of KwaZulu-Natal is affecting our normal lives, including those of healthcare facilities, staff, and patients. This violence doesn't exclude members either. I know of many members of the opposition who only finished their community patrols early this morning. Now, all the while we call for peace and calm within our communities, as a democratic alliance, we're highly disappointed that the ANC in this legislature wants oversight visits first before debating this ongoing matter of politic, of provincial importance. Why were these members not on the ground with their communities calling for calm and witnessing the looting. Where were you while the province burnt? While we are here debating the tuberculosis report, the the ongoing disruptions will prevent 
many, if not all, of the plan's corrective measures. The same TB patients that we are discussing in this debate currently cannot access their medication as many clinics remain closed. KwaZulu-Natal has one of the biggest burdens of TB in the world, and the African Health Research Institute just completed an intensive study in rural in Kanyakude district on disease prevalence. The overlapping burden of HIV and TB is the biggest in KZN. The study's finding is that while HIV diagnosis HIV is well diagnosed and treated. TB and other non communicable diseases are often undiagnosed. The study also actively screened and tested communities for TBs, and the findings are very concerning. 1.4% of the population <laughs> tested in Mkhanyakude had active TB. This might sound like a small percentage, but at both national and global standards, this is a very high rate. More concerning, though, is that only 30% of these patients with active TB were already diagnosed and on treatment. Despite being a curable disease, TB remains a leading cause of death in, in South Africa, TB client death rates in KZN increased to 8% in the mid-year uh, review. We need more screening and testing within communities to ensure TB is diagnosed and treatment is initiated. Honorable, Honorable Doctor, your time has expired. Hmm? Your five minutes has expired. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next speaker for six minutes is Honorable L.G. Seja for the EFF. Mr. Honorable Seja. Honorable Somlomo, it's Koza. Usaicha has submitted an apology. Honorable, we have not received an apology uh, for Honorable Seja. Apologies, uh, so long, but it was submitted. Thank you. Pass. Therefore, is not in the house and has not submitted an apology that we could have recorded by the time we were recording. The our next member for five minutes is Honorable E.V. Dube of the ANC. Honorable members, the next member on the speaker's list, unless there's been an amendment that has not come to me, is Honorable Evie Dube. Is there an amendment to the speaker's list? Honorable Speaker, I think there is an amendment. I don't know how, what happened. There should be an amendment. Let me go to Honorable V. R. M. Lotra of the NFP for two minutes. Honorable V. R. M. Lotra. Honorable V. Adam Lotra. We will move to the next speaker for two minutes, Honorable S. Kapur Rajpanzi of the MF. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. The World Health Organization is targeting 2035 for the eradication of TB. As much as we acknowledge the report by the Honorable MEC in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-19 is also communicable and it exacerbates TB spread and the deaths of TB patients. The Department of Health has a tall order to accomplish complete eradication by 2030. Given the ongoing protests, looting, burning of essential services, and the stresses that are placed on our already weakened health system, 
This investment, therefore, must be equal to the challenge for new diagnostic tests, drugs, and vaccines to prevent it. A while back, the MF debated a human settlement budget and the dire need for housing for all our citizens as a major strategy to prevent communicable diseases like TB, which spreads due to congested living. This period uh, it must be used as an opportune period to strengthen awareness campaigns on TB because people are now paying attention to disease signs, symptoms, and treatment. We must look to the Cuban TB eradication strategy, the success of which is based on political commitment, funding, planning, stewardship, and essential services of high quality, addressing the most vulnerable and hard to reach groups, and ensuring con continued uh, surveillance programs, monitoring and evaluation, and case-based data management. The MF supports this TB report with these recommendations. Thank you. Oh, I am I am I am muted. Honorable members, the next speaker for seven minutes is Honorable NPF Mavuso for the ANC. Honorable Mavuso. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable MECs, Honorable Members, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Speaker, we must indicate that the structures of the ANC and the leaders are uh, throughout the province engaging communities in ensuring that what is happening in the country returns back to normalcy and there is peace and stability. And the current reports are indicating that issues are being addressed and everybody is on board. And we thank the ANC for providing leadership in that particular regard. Honorable Speaker, the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals emphasize that all the people deserve to receive quality health services without any financial hardships. The World Health Organization defines universal health coverage. That means that all individuals and communities must receive the health services that they need without suffering financial hardships. Universal health coverage in includes the full spectrum of essential quality health services from health promotion to prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and palliative care across the life course. Moving towards universal health coverage requires strengthening the health systems in our country. Robust financing structures are key. When people have to pay most of the cost for health services, the poor are often unable to obtain many of the services that they need, and even the rich may be exposed to financial hardships in the event of severe or long-term illnesses. South Africa is currently reforming its health system with universal health coverage through developing a national health insurance program. The NHI represents a substantial policy shift that necessitates a massive reorganization of the current health care system, both public and private. Importantly, it derives its mandate from the National Development Plan of the country, a blueprint for the shape of South African society in 2030. It should be noted that due to resource constraints, TB outcome indicators such as loss to follow up and TB death rate have increased dramatically, impacting on the TB success rate. The high HIV and AIDS and TB, as well as non-communicable disease comorbidities, have negatively influenced the TB success rate, where, where a high number of patients initiated on treatment die. This is obviously a gap that the department has identified, and we're happy as the ANC that the department is working very hard to bridge that gap. The challenge faced by the department at this juncture is the current pandemic, COVID-19 and its impact on the health system and programs. Since the inception of the pandemic, various community-based health services were halted and TB programs were also affected by this. However, Honorable um, Speaker, the ANC is, is applauding that despite the challenges that COVID-19 is imposing on the health system, 
the department is striving to balance its programs. This is not to diminish or undermine the strains that the pandemic has posed on our health system. Honorable Speaker, while it is somehow discouraging to note that TB is the leading cause of death in South Africa, TB burden is driven by poor living conditions of our people, late presentation to health facilities, and it is exacerbated by the social determinants of health, such as poverty and environmental factors. It is for this reason that the ANC calls for integrated services from our sister departments and other structures. We need to come together and assist the Department of Health to identify infected and affected individuals, families and households. We need to all play a role in the finding, actively separating and treatment programs. There is also a greater need for advocacy by the legislature to champion government's response to TB. TB and universal health coverage efforts go hand in hand. Expanding TB efforts provides an important pathway towards universal health coverage and the potential to strengthen health systems by building on health infrastructure originally established for the purposes of, of delivering TB care. At the same time, the global push towards achieving universal health coverage provides an opportunity for TB services to scale up, become more affordable and accessible, and improve in quality. For these reasons, social protection and universal health coverage are core components of the TB end strategy. At the core of it all is provision of adequate funding for TB programs. Healthcare financing has become a prominent aspect of efforts towards achieving the national health insurance. It is thus a cause for a great concern that in recent years would continue to witness insufficient funding within the department due to budget cuts. Honorable Speaker, the ANC recommends that even though TB care and treatment remains free in the public sector, efforts to strengthen TB programs should be scaled up. Community-based health services also need to be strengthened to ensure that people in need of TBK are traced and treated and family members remain educated about TB transmission. The capacity of health facilities must be strengthened to provide TBK and services for greater members of people in need. Working together, we can raise awareness of the disease amongst the people in our constituencies and can provide mechanism of accountability for government funding whilst enhancing the performance of health programs. I thank you very much, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next member for two minutes is Honorable M.E. Pagati of the ATM. Honorable M.E. Pakati, seems like he's not in the house. We'll move to Honorable S.E. Mangale of the ACDP for two minutes. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, TB is a threat to effort to fight poverty. It is a threat to human dignity. Uh, let me see. I see faith-based organization as one of the tools that can be utilized to fight TB. Churches have strength, they have credibility, and they are grounded in the community. This offers them the opportunity to make and read different, to make a real difference in a combating TB. To respond to this challenge, the churches must be transformed in the face of the TB crisis, in order that they become a force for transformation, bringing healing hope and accompaniment uh, to all that they are affected. As trusted and respected members of the society, religious leaders are, are listening to. Their action set an example. This can be especially 
instrumental in eradicating the stigma and discrimination against people living with TB. TB is a threat to family life and a spiritual well-being. A young man and woman fall ill and die. They often suffer spiritual anguish, social isolation, and physical and economic hardship. They also have behind grieving children, spouses and friends who call out for comfort and practical guidance. TB is a threat to the growth of the community. Do not only do families lose parents, spouses, and bread and breadwinners. Society lose their farmers, teachers, healthcare workers, managers who can make change to the community. We as ACDP uh, implore the KZN Department of Health to tighten in trying uh, 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 of fighting against uh, TB. We appreciate that. Thank you so much, Tromlo. Thank you, Honorable Manuela. The next speaker for three minutes is the Honorable Dr. R. Verana of the DA. Dr. Verana, Honorable Member. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. In medicine, there's a saying that prevention is better than cure. And in this matter as well, it can be adapted to what's happening here. Intelligence was in place to protect our vital infrastructure, including healthcare and others, yet nothing was properly done. Tuberculosis patients require food to take their medication. However, many of our provincial food warehouses and supermarkets, especially in our most vulnerable communities, where many TB patients reside, have been looted. We are heading towards a food security crisis, and we need the SANDF to reopen our supply lines to ensure that food and fuel can enter our communities so that hunger, desperation, and the vi- and default of medication can be prevented. One of the most worrying factors is that it, the massive um, AFOX depot at River Horse Valley Business Park was looted and set alight. Tuberculosis, like COVID-19, is a respiratory disease and hospi- patients in hospitals require oxygen to ensure that their lives are saved. We need to ensure that we get our oxygen supply lines back into effect and that the SANDF can protect our oxygen trucks to deliver the oxygen to our hospitals that are already running low, both in private and in public. We cannot let our patients who are desperate for care and oxygen pass away due to the violence and the looting that we are seeing around us. Additionally, the medications warehouses across Etiquini and in other parts of the province have been looted. And we call on the public not to buy or take medication that they get off the street. They do not know what are the effects of this medication and the damage it can do to themselves and their loved ones. What we actually require is the supply lines to be reestablished so that the people on chronic medication, including those who are TB patients, can get their medication and not default. The major risk that we face as a province is a very high default rate from TB, and worse, the development of multi-drug resistant TB that can wreak havoc in our communities if the medication that we currently have do not work. There was already a massive... Your time is up, sir. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next member for 12 minutes is Honorable N.R. Majola, the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee for Health on behalf of the ANC. Honorable N.R. Majola. 
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier and the Executive, Chair of Chairs. Your camera, is it on? Honorable Member, now it is on. Thank you, Hoy. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier and Executive, Chair of Chairs and Deputy Chair of Chairs, Chief, Chief Whip of the House and the Deputy, Honorable Members of this House, Honorable MEC for Health, and the HOD of the department, Mr. Shabalala, and our dignified guests, I greet you all. Speaker, we are debating this topic during a very challenging time of our lives when the country is being ravaged by all sorts of situations that are really not at our advantage as far as the predisposing factors of TB are concerned. In mentioning few, COVID-19, which has taken a toll in our country, has left many families in a state of vulnerability as far as their socioeconomic status are concerned. Secondly, the situation came in with high levels of inhumanity because of its nature, based on the regulations and management of the infectious diseases, where physical conduct in huge numbers is prohibited. It further came with high levels of job losses, adding to the very ailing situation of high rate of unemployment as well as poverty. All these indicators are having negative impact to communities, but it is at the advantage platform of the TB predisposing factors. All these situations have called for high levels of high level of leadership to strengthen their involvement in engaging societies in the, in the management of the situation. We applaud the strides taken by the ANC government in ensuring that the social and security clusters are working close to our communities in mitigating the situation through the social relief of distress program in different levels, as well as provision of food pets. As a caring government, all these are mitigating the socioeconomic status of our societies in keeping the level of vulnerability to this silent killer that is called TB. Speaker, we are running in short of words to explain the good and selfness and selflessness work that has been done by our health care workers at all levels during this trying time. They have experienced all painful things of painful things of losing their colleagues, their families, but they have been soldiering on. Thank you so much, colleagues. Speaker, in debating this topic, we seek to understand the quality of healthcare rendered as far as tuberculosis is concerned. We seek to explore if there are, there are documentations in place about this major killing illness and how it is managed in most healthcare systems. Secondly, we seek to understand whether there is no lack of systematic outcome, assess outcome assessment. And further, we analyze that those outcomes, if there is no lack of resource evaluation in relation to quality care on TB specifically. Speaker, the TB management is no longer contained within health facilities because of its nature. But the department is having some is having service service level agreement with non governmental organisations. Speaker, as legislators, we have got a mandate of checking persistent variations among providers in care of patients, and we provide solutions. We further monitor if formal monitoring systems are in place in the department to rule out potential quality problems together with the prevalence and incidence in each unique district unique province as well as countrywide. Mm. Speaker, this debate is based on the performance outcome of this indicator, which has shown poor results in the fourth quarter performance. As stated in the report given by MEC, it has been clear that the program did not perform well. This is due to so many contributory factors, but mostly the impact of COVID-19. This has contributed by the fact that the regulations on COVID-19 could not allow movements, movements on follow-ups on patients by the dedicated employees of the department, those who are calling them the CCGs. Speaker, we are clear that TB report is an initiative of the office of the office of the president through the South African National AIDS Council called NASANAC, meaning that there is a compliance on the recommendations of the World Health Organization. This initiative by political leadership shows that there is a full buy-in of programs, making it easy for taking the program to the societies, as I have mentioned in the opening. 
that TB is not health responsibility, but it's a societal problem. Far back in 1999, this province was leading in working with the stakeholders from the community. This was done through the identification of relevant stakeholders to be the directly observed treatment leaders and the TB management, be it treatment compliance, treatment completion, as well as the sputum conversion after three months. All that process has given good results as we were leading, we were leading in that program. There was no patient discharged without first identifying the DOT supporter at local level. The engagement of civil society, communities, and, and people affected by TB has been made a cornerstone in the management of TB. Speaker, we cannot play blind in the identification of the predisposing causes of TB, primarily, namely the poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Those are the triplets generated by the government of apartheid, which was a deliberate action. In addressing such issues, it was also the standard that came in and bridged those gaps by establishing relationship with the NGOs and business people, as well as local government. Another initiative that was taken by the national initiative by the, by the government, it was the national initiative program that we call NIP sites. All those NIP sites were meant and established within the communities by community by in by the communities with a buy-in they had with the department. With the analysis of the departmental report, it shows that KZN has the highest burden of TB and HIV in the country. Zooming in to the, to the notification of the TB patient, it shows inconsistency from district to district. The increase in the investment in TB research in driving technological breakthrough is a must and that should be going with a rapid uptake of innovations. Speaker, the department has started implementation of digital innovations for quick response. The Geno Expert machine that is being used in, diagnose, in, in diagnosing our, our clients, it has added value to the department as it has reduced the flow of patients to hospital, as well as having high numbers of clients waiting for the result, which is elongating the period of spread of spreading the infection. But because of that Geno Expert machine, now the turnaround time has now been short circuited. We applaud the, the government as well as the department for that innovation. Speaker, with the establishment of the OSS, where all the departments meet gradually, this silent killer will be history because both social and economic determinants would be dealt with. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker for five minutes to respond to the debate will be the MEC for Health in the province of KwaZulu Natal, the Honorable NC Melane Zuru. Honorable MEC. Afternoon uh, or oh, good morning. Speaker, good morning to the honorable members. Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity of debating this particular uh, debate or report on TB. And the engagement that we have had from the members clearly indicates the commitment uh, that the members and the legislature is having in relation in, the, in regard um, to this challenge. Indeed, it is confirming, Speaker, that members are accepting that TB or the TB challenge is a societal matter more than just a health matter. Honorable Shlongwa uh, has indicated clearly the steps and the approach that should be taken by both ourselves as the Department of Health and the members of the legislature, and I do believe we should appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Speaker, Honorable Nguanyane, we welcome the commitment uh, to work with the department in this regard. And uh, we, we do agree that the loss to follow up and the defaulters are indeed a challenge to the, to the Department of Health. And in ensuring that this challenge is addressed, we believe that it, we should be able to work with civil society, we should be able to work with the honorable members so that in their different constituencies, the Department of Health can also rely on them to assist in ensuring that we bring those that have defaulted, we bring those that have, have been lost to the system to come and actually work with the Department of Health. Uh, speaker, in relation to the availability of medication, I do want to indicate that 
medication for TB is not only available at clinics, not only available in hospitals. We also have CCMTT pickup points, and these pickup points are not just utilized for ARVs, uh, ARV treatment, or any other chronic medication, but the CCMTT pickup points are meant and you are currently utilized for all chronic medication, which also includes uh, the, 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 the TP medication. So, so our communities are able to go to these sites. Some of these sites are in our own rural areas. Some of these sites are inside or are within our townships and they're able to pick their medication from such areas. And the intention of putting those up was so that people who are unable to, tra to travel to areas where, well, uh, unable to travel to our facilities because of lack of money, they will be able to utilize or oh, they'll be just able to walk and pick up uh, their medication and, and, and then go home. Some of them can... Speaker? Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, so, 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 Is this now a discussion we're having or what debate? Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, Speaker. But you may much Speaker, I was just saying that uh, CCMTT points are able, are accessible, and the intention there is that people don't have to pay more money just to go and pick up their medication. Some of the CC, CCMTT pickup points are within the different malls in 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 uh, in in in, in, a, in a, for instance, in 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 the uh, the the camera the, the the oh hey, singi sabagi in. Uh, <laughs> Amanyabo are in these shops that we visit, uh, speaker in the malls where we often get our uh, daily equipment and, you know, daily requirements. So they are able, as and when they go shopping, to actually pick up their medication. And we, are, and we appreciate and encourage everyone to also register on a CCMTT program so that they are able to understand which is their nearest CCMTT pickup point and where can they go and pick up their 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 medication. And over and above the, the CCMTT pickup point uh, speaker, we also have ensured that the CCGs, which are our community health workers, are also able to deliver uh, some of the medication to families that are unable to travel. So, and again, that the intention there was to ensure that uh, medication is available in uh, in to to everyone, including those that are poor, or those that cannot travel. Well, in relation to what has been raised by Honorable Virana, a uh, 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 prim uh, speaker, he is irrelevant as usual. He always speaks to issues that are, are not issues that are under discussion. Yes, we do. We are faced with challenges currently in relation to the strike and the looting, and the premier is going to speak to that. But we, at this point, are talking to strategic issues that are sp uh, about TB, and we intend to implement strategic and a, a strategic approach moving forward, even beyond the, the environment where we are faced with right now. So we would have expected the members to focus the yes, Chair. Your time is up. How? So, five minutes, Islan. Okay, th thank you very much, Chair, and we welcome all the comments that have been made by members. Thank you. We will now move. Honorable members, we've come to the end of the debate. We will now move to the next debate on the report by the MEC for Economic Development and Tourism on the, pro on the progress of the Provincial Economic Recovery and Transformation Plan, including an industrial plan to support localization while investing in the economy for inclusive growth. The first speaker for nine minutes is Honorable J.S. Mumalo, the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Economic Development on behalf of the ANC. Honorable Mumalo. Hello. Honorable Speaker. Hello. Yellow Honorable Muma. 
you 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 are on it's your time that we are hellowing on no thank you very much uh, honorable speaker can you hear me honorable speaker yes we hearing you honorable mumalo <coughs> please also have your camera on i'm trying to connect my camera here you are on your camera is on now honorable mumalo thank you thank you very much uh, honorable speaker uh, honorable premier of kwazulu natal ubaba ukuzeni Honourable members of the Executive Council, honourable members of the provincial. Honourable yes. Mumalo, I do yes. not know what you have done, but you have switched the camera. When I said it is on, you then switched it off. Please switch the camera on, sir. Thank you. Don't don't then fiddle with it now. Can we continue, Honourable Salo? Aibu. Well, uh, honourable speaker, I think I've got a bit. A bit of a challenge because I'm trying to read my speech from the very same gadget, but if I'm putting my speech on here on the gadget, uh, the camera goes off. Can I? Can you give me one uh, minute to connect on another one? Another Mumalo, continue with your debate. We are on your time, sir. Oh please! Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to apologize for the camera. Um, uh, honourable speaker and honourable members. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, on behalf of the African National Congress, uh, I would like to take this opportunity and uh, present this uh, speech uh, to say that, uh, Honorable Speaker, we are meeting at a very difficult time, as other members have indicated, that uh, in the past few days, who have experienced a very challenging problem of uh, uh, the looting that has been taking place in our areas of Wazulu Natal and in particular Eteguini and, and, and Umkungundu. Honorable Speaker and honorable members, we are also meeting today at a very challenging uh, uh, time when we are also facing the challenge of uh, COVID 19 pandemic. We are confronting a new, very uh, challenging uh, phenomena arising from what initially started as a political protest calling for the release of our former president, Ubaba Ungamalala, then got hijacked by the criminals as resulting in the damage of property and looting, mainly in retail and furniture warehouses. I must indicate that uh, a lot has been happening in the past few days, as I have indicated, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker. Asisho nje uguti si bongakakulu u ndunangkulu wesfundazwe ubaba ukuzen bawazilu ba angenelele kanjalo nongongoshe bawazilu guti bafige ngapa endaweni yangagiti izolo. Bazo wazu ba bazo tambisa isimo ebeses pumile sandeni goba inte sibonile siboni la abantu benga sakti ninge ngobuti bazita pele impasa kutoa abantu besebe shisa e i i i i i amapiliti kanjalo ne ngala zinda sifisa ujumba subdulse kakulo kusukbonge goba ekpinengo sogo baninga bantu bagiti abazo la shegelu wa imsebezi, kanja alo futi e, ntugwine zimbalwa, sizo bese spegene nesimo, e, se kinga soguti abanta baningi, bazo be sebe bulawa e, inzala. Ilezo zinto ebe spinu basi kizelele, kapamu uba si tabele pambi. The coronavirus pandemic uh, uh, COVID-19 global crisis has disrupted the functioning of the South African economy and is having serious socioeconomic effect of KwaZulu Natal regional economy. The lockdown of the, this country has resulted in a number of unintended consequences, namely, a number of businesses have halted operations or are downscaling, and some completely shutting down 
as working capital is eroded and markets are shaken. Government revenue has dwindling and the country lost an estimated 9 billion rand in, in April alone last year in 2020. It is believed that a number of workers have become unemployed, poverty levels as, as, as sought as, as people both formally and informally lose uh, their income. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, furthermore, some of the economic challenges facing Wazulu Natal during this period, as mentioned by Honorable Premier uh, uh, Kuzeni, related to the largest decrease of employment. In our province uh, uh, alone, uh, 280,000 as, 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 as of April 2021, decline in revenue, tax collection, reduced revenue impact on, of government spending and social ease as crime arising from these economic challenges, among other factors. Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, the plan therefore correctly argues that it is critical that the Guazulu Natal provincial government, as led by the African National Congress, should seize the challenging period to begin changing the economic trajectory of our province, but also come to up to with a mechanism that will revive the economy of the province. Uh, to this end, the Guazulu Natal Economic Reconstruction and Transformation Plan is a correct program that responds to the economic challenges. And indeed, there are positive signals that it will go a long way going forward. Perhaps, Honorable uh, Speaker, let me highlight some of the important points that have been achieved uh, by this uh, particular plan. The Wazulu Natal Economic Reconstruction and Transformation Plan Progress Report, as presented to the Executive Council somewhere in, in June 2021, 20, 20, noted the following achievement. One, the many factories of about 18 units have been built and ready for occupation by the SMMEs. Mid uh, uh, factories units of about 2,000 square meters has always already been built for mid-sized manufacturers SMMEs. Uh, and again, the titanium uh, dioxide plant construction of a pilot plan for a, a, a titanium dioxide project funded through the DTIC and about 2,000 construction jobs have been created as a result of that. As part of the enterprise development, about 22.5 million has been dispersed to cooperatives through procurement of machinery, equipment, raw materials, and etc. Thus creating 217 jobs by funded cooperatives uh, 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 by 2021. Reviving industrial estimates about 152 people in eight districts have received training uh, for, uh, for, for height and skill. Pertaining to the industrial development operation, Vula con continues to be rolled out as this will also contribute a lot in terms of job creation and job opportunities for our SMMEs. Honorable uh, Speaker, the, the above are some of the key victories as, as a result of this plan that we have made reference to uh, 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 in, 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 in the speech, in particular by Honorable MEC Ravi uh, Pillay. Our responsibility as members of the legislature, among other things, is to monitor and evaluate the extent to which this plan yielded sustainable outcomes, but also ensure that there will not be any uh, corruption in awarding of these opportunities uh, to beneficiaries as we have not had any of the negative stories uh, relating, relating uh, to this uh, award. Additionally, our role moving forward will be to support these initiatives while monitoring their implementation in terms of accountability model of the legislature. Chairperson, as we conclude, we would like to emphasize that those charged with the responsibility of processing these initiatives who are our government officials, some of which are very dedicated, should desist any temptation to misuse these programs to benefit themselves and or their families, since we are not going to agree to that, especially as the African National Congress. 
Uh, with those few words, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, I would like to uh, thank you uh, very much, Gabonga uh, Gaku. Thank you, Honorable Mumalo. The next speaker for five minutes is the Honorable O.B. Kunene, whip of the IFP. Demand. Honorable Speaker, I don't know whether my camera is on. Yes, it's Honorable proper. Speaker, the Honorable Premier, the Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition, Honorable MC Pile, Honorable Members of the Legislature, and Senior Officials of the Legislature. This debate takes place at an unprecedented time in the history of our country and our province where we have just experienced criminality and the total disregard of the law, where trucks were banned, properties torched to the ground after, after being looted. These unfortunate acts are bound to cripple the economy of our province and reverse the mild gains that have been achieved since the economy of our province was beginning to experience limited growth before this said incident occurred. Today's debate also takes place in the midst of the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic level four. COVID-19 has disrupted lives of the people of our country and will negatively affect the economy where business activity will slow down. Worst of all, now that a lot of businesses have been bent to the ground, unemployment will rise astronom astronomically as those who were employed before this senseless looting took place will join the queue of the unemployed. The IFP welcomes the report presented by the Honorable MC on progress that has been made regarding economic recovery, as well as plans to support localization. Clearly, the Honorable MC will have to lead an effort to, address, to assess the impact of the stairways and disruption of many businesses within our province, and in partnership with business, chart a way forward towards growing the economy of our province. We don't know how the Honorable MC is going to lead an effort to attract or lure investors to come and invest in our province in the light of the destruction that we saw taking place in the past few days. Our province requires investments in key industries such as local manufacturing, agriculture, and tourism. After looting incidents, that you have just experienced in our province, it will be very difficult to convince potential investors to invest in a province which is engulfed with pol political and criminal instability, which is The Honorable MC that reflects as MM, please, please mute. There is another member that is also not muted. IT, when a member is debating, mute people that are disturbing. We apologize, Honorable Unene. We have held your time. Thanks, Honorable Speaker. Our, our saying our province requires investment in key in industries such as local manufacturing, agriculture, and tourism. After looting incidents that we have just experienced in our province, it will be very difficult to convince potential investors to invest in a province which is engulfed with political and criminal instability, which read it, their ugly heads through the destruction of property and business premises, which we have just seen happening in our province. On agriculture and agri-processing, agri the IFP is concerned about the number of people who are employed in agriculture and agri processing. There are a lot of people who can be absorbed in agriculture and agri-processing, as can be seen in the number of applicants that are received by the ADA from aspiring farmers who need support and financial assistance. The IFP proposes that an effort be made to increase the 285 job opportunities that were created through the RASET program. It would be good if the department were to increase the number of trucks and parkies that would be used by farmers to transport their produce to big supermarkets. It would be good if there would be a storage facilities where aspiring farmers could store their produce before it reaches consumers. 
on clothing and textiles, the IFP noted the investment of about 780 million rand to fast track the implementation of the clothing and textile SEZ. This sector is one of the critical industries in driving the economy of the province. The IFP is pleased with the progress of the SA retail clothing, textile, footwear, and leather a value chain master plan in Msinga, which has brought hope to women and youth by building the clothing and textile sector. The IFP wishes to see this program expand, expanded to other parts of our province as well. In this way, local production could offset the, the import of cheaper fabrics and clothing from China, which have negatively affected local businesses in the past year. As the IFP, we propose that government should work closely with the private sector to upskill the youth with technical and smart technical skills, smart textile skills, since they have a potential to be employed in the other industries such as automotive and construction. On industrial development, the IFP welcomes government efforts to revive industries in Mandeni, Ezakeni, and Isitel. While we support this initiative, we would wish that the government would do that. I'll come back, Honorable Speaker. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the next member for eight minutes is Honorable H. Tibur from the DA. Honorable Hank the board. Honorable Mwango, is there connectivity issue there? Because the member is part of the sitting. I'm staying with him, Speaker. He was What's connected. Him? Yeah, he is still connected. Whilst you are still checking, we will move on to Honorable LG Serja for six minutes or the replacement of Honorable LG Serja. Honorable members, earlier on, we could not have uh, tabled the apology of Honorable, Honorable LG Serja. Honorable because, Honorable. Okay, I'll come Honorable back Honorable. to you. Honorable. I'll come back to you, Honorable. Honorable. We could not have tabled because uh, it arrived past the time that the, the, the administration was saying, subsequent to what the leader of the EFF caucus uh, clarified to us, the administration also said that it arrived at about 10 to 10. And now I am officially tabling it. Uh, in case honorable procedure is not in the house, the EFF may replace the person. Can I then check honorable Mwango on honorable Depur? Honorable Speaker, he is trying to be unmute. Can you ask IT to unmute him? He's connected, but he can't unmute himself. IT? Whilst we are still uh, struggling to resolve the matter that re uh, relates to Honorable Debur, and IT is inter intervening, uh, Honorable Mwango, thank you for that. May I call upon. Yes, he's now on, ne? Honorable Tipur, so sorry, sir, for what you have gone through, the technical glitch you have gone through. You can continue with your debate, sir. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much, and thank you to RT and the honorable members for bearing with me there. We did experience a bit of a technical difficulty. Um, honorable Speaker, we, we uh, I come to you today as the legislature, um, and as a member of the Economic Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs Portfolio Committee, with a deep and heavy heart, Honorable Speaker, we have seen the wholesale destruction of the economy of KwaZulu-Natal. At this point in time, we actually do not have much of an economy left to actually revitalize. To speak of an economic recovery plan at this point in time, I think is absurd, to put it lightly. I think that there has been a large-scale political failure, and that large-scale political failure stems immediately and directly from the Premier's office. Honorable Speaker, we cannot even start to speak about any kind of 
economic recovery plans until there is a political stability, leadership, and a clear plan of action that will come from the Premier's office as the elected leader of this province. As the ANC elected leader and as the Premier of this province, we need to see the Premier taking action. We note with great concern that he has been taking action, but in doing so, he has allegedly been assaulting members of the community instead of providing leadership, instead of getting the SAPS into residential areas, into business areas, into townships, into all the economic zones that have been completely destroyed by looters. We should have seen action from the Premier from Sunday evening when this looting started. And we have not seen that. And consequently, up to today, we have a complete lack and disparity and a leaderless province where we have no idea where we're going from an economic development, policing, or any other social perspective. Honorable Speaker, we, we note EDTIA's plans that were outlined by the Honorable MEC some weeks ago about the various programs that will be implemented to improve the economy. And if this week since Sunday has taught me anything as personally, it has taught me that yes, indeed, there is a divide in the economy. There is a definite divide in the people who have and who do not have. And that we need to close the economic and social gap between those who do not have proper jobs and those who have jobs. We need to start closing the gap between people who are incited into going and looting because they don't have proper jobs and those who might have jobs. And the only way that we can do this is if we stand together politically, we stand together as people from all races, all religions and all creeds, and we say that now the EDTIA budget that we approve every year actually goes into meaningful outcomes. Honorable Speaker, how do we speak about Black industrialists, which is one of the pro programs of ETIA, when the very factories, the very areas which are, are benefiting from the black industrialist program have been looted and burnt. How do we speak about economic development within KwaZulu-Natal when the presidential projects, and some of them are even presidential projects that were inaugurated by the former president, Jacob Zuma, have been burnt to the ground because of political instability and a lack of leadership from the Premier's office. Please, Honourable Speaker, we ap will appeal to you. Can the ANC please sort out its factions and leave the economy alone so that we can all together, people from all political uh, points of view, people from all parties can prosper? That is the only way. Right now, Honourable Speaker, we need to secure food in all areas of KwaZulu-Natal. Honorable Speaker, tomorrow we want to do oversight. There are members of this legislature who do not have fuel in their cars. There is no food security. We need to start getting medicine to people. We need to start getting the major economic routes, the N3, the N2, the M4s, and all the linking routes in KwaZulu-Natal need to be opened as a matter of urgency so that the very businesses that rely on resupplying people, the transport uh, industry gets back to normal, and the food security is improved as a matter of urgency. If food security is not improved, then economic development is out the window. We have seen wholesale destruction, and it has all been due to political instability. Honorable Kumalo said that what, what started off as a, as a political um, protest has turned into something else. There are members, senior members of the legislature, we must reflect on their actions. And I will not make allegations, Honorable Speaker, but there are people within the legislature and in various political parties, but they must reflect on their actions over these past few days. And they must be held to account for the development or the non-development of the economy of this province. Who is going to provide the thousands of jobs that have been lost due to the factories the manufacturing businesses, the retail businesses, the petrol stations, every single business that has been destroyed in our key economic regions, our nodes that have year after year been identified as key economic zones, those people have lost their jobs. 
Their places of employment have been burnt down and the Premier has been silent on this. We are only ne- now seeing the Premier after three days of looting. This is absolutely unacceptable. ETIA as an entity at this point in time is unable to function. Until there is calm and stability, there is going to be no economic growth. We need real outcomes from ETIA. And it is far too late to now come and say that we want radical economic transformation of the economy when there is simply no economy left. Investor confidence in the, in the province of KwaZulu-Natal and South Africa as a country has gone out of the window. I don't think that there's any international investor who would want to invest in KwaZulu-Natal at this point in time. And I think that in the coming weeks, we will probably see that major investments that were on the cards for KwaZulu-Natal will be withdrawn. And can we blame international investors for not wanting to invest in KwaZulu-Natal? The first thing they look at is political leadership. They look for stability. They look at a police force that is unable to secure themselves, never mind the key economic areas of KwaZulu-Natal. We have Richards Bay Minerals, which has for years suffered under the brunt of violence. We have Tronox, another key in uh, logistics, sand mining, and, and, and mining industry within the Richards Bay area, which has been shut down, looted, and burnt. Hundreds and thousands of jobs are being lost in the Richards Bay area. Again, one of the key areas that ETIA has been targeting for economic development. The Richards Bay Industrial Development Zone, as it stands right now in terms of the uh, policy documents that we have, is supposed to be one of the biggest investment areas within KwaZulu-Natal. It is not... Honorable Member, your time is up. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, May I call from uh, Honorable LG Seja or the representative thereof? EFF, we will move. Honorable VR Mlochwa, he is not in the house. He is followed by Honorable MC Fraser, the chairperson of Public Works, for nine minutes on behalf of the ANC. Honorable Zaba. Please unmute his Ganan. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier and your Executive, Honorable Members, fellow South Africans, I greet you all. We meet during extraordinary times when our province has been engulfed by violent protest action, which has led to the unprecedented destruction of property. The destruction and looting that we have witnessed over the past few days means that our economic recovery efforts will no doubt be affected. This requires us as the responsive ANC-led government to modify or adapt the recovery plan so that it is also response to the prevailing situation on the ground and the devastating aftermath. Any situation, if analyzed, Honorable Speaker, correctly presents an opportunity. We know that in any situation such as this one, it is the women and black women in particular who suffer the most. It is important, therefore, that at this time we explore means to strengthen our support for women-owned businesses, especially the SMMEs. Any recovery strategy has to prioritize women, youth, disabled persons, and military veterans as per the mandate given to us by our voters. I am glad that the recovery plan as presented by MEC Ravi Pile prioritized those groups. But for the purposes of this debate, Honorable Speaker, I will focus on those initiatives or programs that are geared towards women economic empowerment. History and recent experiences teach us that no crisis is gender neutral. Global trends and studies show that women are the heaviest to be affected by any social or economic downturn. 
This is due to the economy and social vulnerabilities that women across the globe suffer. In a report Somlomo released last year, the United Nations stated that nearly 60% of women around the world work in secure informal employment. It further stated that women earn on average 16% less than their male colleagues due to the gendered wage gap and are 25% more likely to live in poverty when compared to men. Honourable members, this tells us that women will bear the brunt of the unrest taking place in our province currently. As women, we are therefore encouraged that our recovery efforts as the province have not only focused on recovering the economy to what it was before, but that there is emphasis on the transformation of the economy. We must commend the strides that have been made by this government to empower women economically in line with our quest to transform the economy and change its architecture. Some of these strides, Honourable uh, Speaker, can be seen in a few examples in, in a few of the examples that I'll mention. On Operation Vola, recently the government stated the massive started the massive rollout of Operation Vola Fund disbursements. Operation Vula Fund, through the fund, the government is disbursing equipment and business instruments worth 300 million to over 1,000 successful applicants. It's, I, I was pleased to learn that 49.5% of those beneficiaries are companies owned by women. And this speaks to our commitment to attain gender equality. In, in, in incubation and mentorship, and mentorship to women in the aluminium, steel, beneficiation and engineering sector, in 2020-2021, a total of 30 women-owned enterprises operating in the engineering, steel, fabrication, casting and aluminium sector were trained as part of a partnership between ETIA and the Downstream Aluminium Center of Technology. Through ATIA, Honorable Speaker, funding businesses, development, intervention and support, these enterprises were able to access the equipment, machinery at the center, administration support and compliance consultations, technology transfer, membership to certain industry bodies, and also the accreditation uh, marketing and exhibitions opportunities. We are glad, Honorable Speaker, Speaker to report that as a result, a total of 51 jobs were created while 95 were sustained. Women Mentorship Program, ETA in collaboration with ITALA, has over the past two years embarked on Women in Business Workshop called Imbogoto Iazenzel. These are interactive workshops aimed at soliciting key insight from women themselves on obstacles and challenges they face in business. These uh, this sessions are conducted in partnership with various stakeholders in the SME space in the form of presentation and one-on-one -on -one session. In this 2020-2021 financial year, Honorable Speaker, ATI Unit funded the mentorship program for the period of 12 months to 20 women-owned companies. This program is designed to support women in the functional and management of their businesses, focusing on different uh, areas, like in the home building uh, skills program, a total of 190 women from different districts were trained in bricklaying, plumbing, roofing, carpentry as part of the NHBRC home building training program. The program is a product of a partnership between government and the National Home Building Registration Council, and it's funded by ATA Somlomo. As we conclude, the Honorable Somlomo, these are just few of many programs that are being undertaken by government to empower women. It must be noted that all the programs mentioned above were undertaken or implemented during over the past 15 months when the country was already gripped by COVID-19 pandemic.
What is left for us now is to quicken the tempo of women economic empowerment. And it has to happen now during the year of Mamu Chalot Matbek. In Bogot, the Somlomo, I think Wenzel, God, I think I would hear said. Makosiabo Magakulu, whom Sonny Shaw Baba or Ravi Pile, whom seven Zomus, Awenzai, with the department yaki, Uguputula is in Pilo Zomam, Siabona song, Ugusiko and Zagala Yunga Pande, Abanta Batinteraga Kulu, Nabanta Batu Meseraga Kulu, Abanto Abang. Oh, ma'am. Nako se akala guhul menuwe tu oholo African National Congress. Uguti ukubege ez nchalo eni ez nchale oga te uzenza uge sikati se COVID. Noma se wenzege logo wenzegele se autemba gakulu hul menuwa band nga bong. The next speaker, thank you Honorable MC Fraser. The next speaker for two minutes is the Honorable Esther Kur Rajbanzi for the MF. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable MEC, it's quite ironic that your progress report on the Provincial Recovery and Transformation Plan, including the industrial plan to support localization while investing in the economy for inclusive growth, comes up at a time for debate when we are amidst socioeconomic crisis point. There's definitely a severe disconnect between the department and the local communities to relay the opportunities afforded to tackle the triple challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. The Minority Fund recommends that the Portfolio Committee on, on Economic Development must insist on all economic opportunities for the vulnerable sections of our societies to be broken down to line item level with clear equity indicators attached to these. This will shape the government's radical economic transformation program in a trackable format so that this department's inputs results in positive outputs. Currently, the progress report given by the, due to the violent protests indicates that there, there, is, there are no easy victories until we do not bring strong reforms in all other sectors to enable economic stability. Sasria is only going to pay 4 billion rand for 16 billion rand stocks looted in each in, in and in Sanduzi businesses. This means that all insurance premiums would increase, further burdening ordinary people who are trying to protect their belongings through insurance. Honorable MEC, the biggest problem we all face is diminishing investor confidence, and we expect a follow up report on a real economic recovery report that focuses more on livelihoods of people living below the poverty line. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker is Honorable M.E. Pakati for two minutes. He's not in the House. And the next speaker then, therefore, will be Honorable S.E. Mangele for two minutes for the ACDP. Bishop Mangele. Speaker, uh, yes. <clears throat> thank you very much. <clears throat> Speaker, <clears throat> the Wazul Natal play a significant role in South African economy and is the second largest contributor to the country's economy. The province contributes about 16% of the uh, GDP after counting share of 34%. So South African economy outlook, as with other developing countries, is vulnerable to both internal and external rents. The provincial economy is driven by mainly the Etiquini Metro and other district municipalities, especially those dominated by uh, urban areas. A Tawini contribute the most of 61%, which is a, a, a attribute to economic activities such as tourism, paper ports, etc. So if you kill Deben in Wazulu Natal, as we have seen what has happened during the few past days, it means you kill the whole economy 
of Guazulu Natal. However, in terms of the plan that uh, our NEC has uh, forwarded to us, ACDP is happy about the Operation Vula because Operation Vula is supporting our youth entrepreneurs and it is aligned with the, uh, uh, the Youth Economic Empowerment Strategy. We hope that Operation Vula will contribute something uh, which will uh, Honorable Yes. Your time is up, Mr. Nishawa. Oh. The next speaker for five minutes is the Honorable O.P. Gunene on behalf of the IFP. Honorable Gunene. Thanks, Honorable Speaker. The former MEC Honorable Duven Nobe, while heading the Economic Development Portfolio, signed an MOU which was aimed at fast tracking the entry of rural and township co communities into the automotive sector and the entire value chain. The IFP wishes to know how far did the department pursue this avenue. On the informal sector, the IFP welcomes the, welcomes the program aimed at empowering the informal sector. The informal economy is one of the major drivers of economic growth within our province. We wish to see the department working with municipalities to grow local economies and assist the informal sector to participate actively in the local economies. Italia was earmarked to assist hawkers, street traders, tax shop owners, cooperatives, and other small businesses with affordable loans. The department also committed itself that it was going to assist in opening the wholesale and retail sector through the bulk buying of fast moving goods. We'll appreciate to get an update on how far this matter has been pursued by the department. On mining, more people must be encouraged to get involved in mining. The department could assist in reducing the red tape in this sector. It will also be helpful to educate our people on how they could play a role in the mining and industry. The so-called diamond rush experienced in Guatlati recently is an indication that rural communities are keen to play a role in mining in order to better their lives. The IFP is deeply concerned about the instability at Richards Bay Minerals, which, which has led to the decision to cease operations due to the deteriorating security situation experienced there. The IFP calls for a speed intervention by the department, which we have seen happening already, hoping that these efforts will yield the desired results. More than 5,000 families depend on this company to put bread on their table. On the ocean economy, the IFP notes that an amount of 3.5 million rand was transferred by the department to Itala to commission the assessment study the Bay had present in the Devon Harbour where a pilot project on the boat and shipbuilding project was implemented. The IFP wishes to see more people from the previously disadvantaged group participating in the ocean economy. Having said so, the IFP is concerned about media reports alleging that more than 3.4 million rand from Itala Bank was diverted from the bank to foot the legal bill of former President Jacob Zuma's 20. 2005 arms deal court challenge. It is also reported that some of this money was used to renovate a house in Forest Town in Johannesburg, which was occupied by former President Zuma. The IFP wishes to know from the Honorable Embassy how far through these allegations are. On tourism, the IFP welcomes plans announced by the Honorable Embassy to resuscitate the tourism sector, which was badly affected by the COVID. 19 pandemic. We are concerned about the slow progress in processing applications for the 20 million RAND KZN tourism fund. The 400 beneficiaries are desperately in need of this assistance. We urge the department to speed up this process. On the new investments, the IFP wishes to see more and more investors to be attracted to come and invest in our province in order to tackle the unemployment challenge facing our province. We hope the Honorable MEC will continue to work harder 
in repositioning the KZN province as a destination whose economy will enable the investor to conduct their business in a safe and pro profitable manner. In order to grow the number of small businesses, we wish the department could consider to capacitate the unemployed youth of our province on the skills on how to start and manage businesses. We wish the department could partner with established businesses to have learnerships where young people can be taught skills on how to start and manage businesses. It is important that our youth be imparted with these skills in taking into account the challenges that of unemployment that we are facing. We hope that we will be able to conquer the difficulties that are facing the economy of our country. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kunene. The next speaker for 10 minutes is the Chair of Committees, Honorable S.A. Duma, for the ANC. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker Mahubela, for affording us this opportunity. Once again, it is one of those times where you need to address a lot of imbalances that has been created by the material condition of our country. How I wish I debated wearing a cap of the boor, who is able just to encapsulate one spirit of the economy, the destruction of infrastructure Point and the lack chair. of supply. Of order, Chair. Honorable Rogers. Can the Honourable Member please refer to De Boer as Honourable De Boer in terms of the standing rules? Thank you, Chair. Uh, oh, thank you, Honourable uh, Rogers. Honourable Chair of Chairs, I am not sure whether you, you did not, but all Honourable Members in the House must be referred to as Honourable Members. I was emphatic, I can still repeat, Honourable De Boer, Honourable Speaker, nevertheless, he is able just to encapsulate one theory and spirit of being worried about the economy. Unfortunately, ours as the ruling party goes deeper than that. We are worried first that in the midst of the pandemic of Corona, there are a lot of lives that are being lost in the process. In the midst of this pandemonium that has been created by thugs on the issue of floating of buildings, unfortunately, there were also lives lost in the process of those stampede. That's where we just want to start because the economic outlook ours is not driven profit, but ours is to ensure that the ordinary woman in Wanongoma goes to bed with a stomach that has been enticed by the proper nutrients. Unfortunately, others are not worried about that. They are only worried about the new liberal position. Honorable Speaker, we understand, we feel very bad that Honorable Pillay is at the helm of this during the pandemic, which continues to cause social mayhem economic turmoil and in some cases political instability to countries around the world. It is evident that the viral and COVID-19 pandemic has destabilized our lives, both social and economical. With the third wave already sending shock waves around the country, lives continue to be lost at an alarming rate and its impact to the economy remains pronounced. I must just mention, Honorable Speaker, that in recent week, South Africa entered into the third wave of COVID-19 infections and found itself recording skyrocketing levels of corona infections, which pick up up to 26,000 infections per day and coupled with fatalities of close 500 people per day in the first week. This symbolized that another greater recession of the economy, which the statistics indicate a surge in business confidence, building plans approved, manufacturing orders and adverse for jobs, demonstrating the positive sentiments across the economy. The main drivers of the recovery include inter alia, rising consumer confidence, elevated buoyant commodity prices, and strong global growth and increasing investment climate in the country. The country entered into the COVID-19 wave at a time when the economy was recovering, albeit at a slower pace than levels reached pre-pandemic period. Accordingly, we have seen the KZN province economy growing at 3.7% in the first quarter of 2021, although recording a year-on-a-year -year decline of which 6.9, which equates to a lot of 35 billion to the provincial Mr. economy. I think honorable members should be mindful that there's a, there's a type of quantum Recording. that we are... Yes, honorable member, what's your, what's your point? 
Hello, Honorable Tuma. Yeah, our speaker, I'm standing with your own roll 50. Okay. Just to, check if, just to check if the member, what he's wearing, meets the requirement of a, a formal dress code. I cannot see the honorable member properly. I am seeing that he is dressed in what looks like a polo neck jersey. That's what I am looking at, and it is falling within the category that I've seen members dressing on things that are like sweaters and uh, over shirts that the Honourable Member Mwango and Honourable Duma are always wearing in. So unless there is another visual that may show me something else, but he is wearing something that looks acceptable from where I am. Thank you, Honourable Duma. You may continue. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker, for that proportion. And this is just a myopic excuse that is characterized by someone who will be mentally colonized. We are born and coming from the peasantry lifestyle and environment, Honorable Speaker. We're sorry that we cannot just meet the expectation of the colonialists of this country. Honorable Speaker, the aforementioned positive growth trajectory has not been attained merely because of the natural economic forces of supply and demand. At the onset, the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020, government announced a national economic recovery plan of 500 billion stimulus package to revive the economy that had been affected by the great lockdown across the globe, whilst also minimizing the social impact of COVID-19 on the citizens of the country. KZN government has also formulated its own reconstruction and transformation plan, which is regarded as ERTP, which identifies a number of intervention about 14 priorities, which one just want to take a couple play for highlighting and be proactive. The case of an economic transformation plan was formulated out of an ardent desire to deal with the following challenges that we brought by COVID-19. Number one, increasing poverty levels amongst our people, poor access to healthy facilities due to increased demand, liquidation of companies, increasing unemployment, and rising income inequality. Whilst acknowledging these challenges, were worsened by COVID-19 pandemic. It must be noted that most of these challenges, including other social economic challenges that we've already referred to, such as underdevelopment, broken and unequal education, skewed access to economic opportunities and other social amenities, are part of the legacy of the colonial apartheid system of governments. Since the dawn of democracy in 94, addressing the legacy of apartheid has been apex priority of the ANC and South African government. Against this backdrop, the KwaZulu-Natal construction transformation plan was formulated out of the ardent desire to arrest the aforementioned challenges that were created by the apartheid system exacerbated by the COVID-19. The case at NRCP highlights the importance of ensuring that post-COVID-19, the growth has a cascading effect and benefit the historical disadvantaged groups. The recalibration of the provincial economy should ensure that the citizens of the province have equal opportunities to participate and contribute in the regional economy that is integrated with the global economy and share the rewards and benefits of economic growth. It is against this background that one of the key policy imperatives identifying the plan in economic transformation, the plan thereof recommends the speed implementation of economic transformation programs such as Bula Fund, RASET, bulk buying, and targeted procurement. Today, the provincial government has funded a number of youth and women-owned SMEs around the province to the value exceeding 200 million euros speaker. Poor social and economic infrastructure leading to spatial underdevelopment in rural and township areas is one of the key legacies of the colonial apartheid system. The case of NRCP places infrastructure development as a key strategy to modernize the economy while stimulating economic growth through driving aggregate demand to finish good as a catalyst for productivity. The economic recovery plan prioritized the need to build resilient, smart, and sustainable infrastructure that supports the development of smart, Upitiqua cities, towns in the province through investing in the following areas. Broadband infrastructure, highly skilled, productive labor, efficient and smart infrastructure, global connectivity, efficient and affordable energy, institutional capability, excellent, macroeconomic stability and policy certainty, productive investment, strong and revitalized district economy, environment resource optimization and utilization. We must, however, mention, honorable speaker, that under these circumstances, 
we are also delegating honorable PLA just to go an extra mile and take into cognizance the effect that has taken place over the last six days in the country. It is a normally a human experience that you will have normal citizen just looting and harvesting that is everywhere within the economic means because this has created a problem. Today, as we speak, we have got a shortage of food, we've got a shortage of, of even petroleum processes, even the recalculation of this economy we are referring to, which is what is critical at this point. Unfortunately, in another communities, there are some new opportunity trends where you see the, the vigilante group where they are just stopping everyone. You must report who you are, where you come from, but we need this thing to be driven at a level of government joint operations. Since the launch of RTP, a number of infrastructure programs have started. These include major road infrastructure upgrades such as national highways and two and three, provincial roads, regional airports, upgrade Peter Marsberg Market, Mukuz and Newcastle, and informal trading facility being built around the province in areas such as Okashamba, Kwama Chomela, Nongo, Mamsunduz, and Kokstad. Furthermore, the provincial government is also investing in social infrastructure, particular libraries, which is going to assist our youth. The province in areas such as Msunduz, Mzumbe, Richmond, Wadlangas, and Mount. The colonial systems that the Lakers, where African countries rely on the development countries or the developed state for the trade in raw materials in exchange of high valued manufactured and plant and machinery. The case at NRTP also prioritizes the need to advance regional integration of the country, particular case at N, with other African countries so as to reduce over-reliance on community exports to the Western countries and Asia. The plan identifies the need to consolidate KwaZulu-Natal markets for goods and services, particularly taking advantage of the expanded African market through the African continental free area trade, which came into effect in January 2021. This FTCA is expected to provide South African exporters 90% duty-free export to a continental market of over 1.3 billion. I wonder how many many speakers do I still left with because I just wanted just <laughs> to jump. The Wazun Natarati also underscores the importance of advances in manufacturing technology to increase the country's capacity to benefit minerals and add value to local products, thus unlocks the country's export growth potential and enables countries to aggressively launch their products into international markets. If this identifies program to increase the province's manufacturing competitiveness through infrastructure investment into the Dubai Trade SEZ, Richards Bay RTZ, and the representation of Kwazulu Natal Regional Industrial Park, such as Ezakeni, Madaden, and Ezekiel. Your time is up. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. We support the sentiment that is coming from the ruling party. Thank you. The next speaker now uh, to respond to the debate is the Honorable R.R. Pillay, the MEC for ATIAC. Honorable uh, MEC you. for five thank minutes. You. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, let me thank all the members for their contribution. And uh, let me assure you that the plan that we are debating remains. All the issues that have been raised, whether it's Vula, Rasset, Black Industrialists, the work of Itala, the automotive sector, the issues around RBM, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, all those plans remain and will be implemented. In fact, many of the issues have been responded to in detail in other platforms. In fact, what we'll have to do is intensify it. And in once we've overcome the current tasks, we'll actually have to have a much greater assistance from the national government to take it to new levels. But we would as many speakers have indicated, we need to deal with the current crisis that we have. And we are all at one about the extent of the crisis that we find ourselves in. And we must characterize it properly. It is a diabolical exploitation of the issues of poverty, unemployment, and inequality, which we have been grappling with for some time. Yes, there was looting by the poor, but there was also looting by those with fancy cars who can know me by no means be described as poor. But the greatest condemnation must fall to those who orchestrated a diabolical plan with reckless abandon. Now, all of us have a great responsibility in overcoming this crisis. MEC in Konyeni is hard at work 
leading our security cluster, coordinating with the South African Police Service, the South African National Defence Force, the intelligence services, and municipal forces. Of course, under the overall command of our Premier. And I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the Premier, who against great odds has bravely led from the front. This morning, we attended a meeting led by the Premier with the Ministers of Police, Intelligence, and the Minister of Defence, who are all in our province as we debate here today. Indeed, the Premier has been leading from the front and we must give him support. It's tempting to engage in, 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 in petty politics. And Honourable de Boer, I could not help but notice that you said that you've thought long and hard and deeply in the last few days of what you call closing the gap. And I hope that that penetrates and makes you understand and contribute very, very su substantially and in good faith to that debate, because that those thoughts are of no use if it's not matched by action. So the security side, honorable members, is understood to be the key issue and is being dealt with. The supply lines with regard to the uh, pending challenges around food security are recognized and steps are being taken to secure those sources. I want to also report that we have been able to already have this social compact between government, business, labor, and civil society. And we've been able to work together on this, share ideas, hear their, uh, their immediate challenges and what the priorities should be at this, at this point in time. We must also not forget the good stories that are happening. Despite all the challenges, there are good stories already of communities coming together, cleaning up, leading from the front, because we've got to leave, give our people hope, and those who have nefarious intentions must be isolated. So we must start immediately with a message of, of rebuilding. We must not just lament and be paralyzed. I want to use this opportunity to also talk about the way social media is used, and take this message to broader society, to be aware of fake news, not to repeat news that you have not verified, because a key part of the challenge is dealing with panic in, in, in communities. We must be part of a greater message of calm, giving them comfort and give them confidence that we are doing things. Of course, the arrival of the Na National Defense Force and its deployment has gone a long way towards that. And that deployment will be intensified over the period of, of time because it's key to the economic recovery process that we want to, to, to fast track. I want to also make an appeal to you as members, as public representatives. Go to your constituencies and add value to this process. Organize people, give leadership, expose and isolate any forces of chaos, chaos that they might be. History has placed a, a huge task on our shoulders. And you have a choice, in, choice of lamenting and blaming, or you can roll up your sleeves and say, we will not be defeated. We will overcome this particular this particular challenge. I want to deal also with uh, a country called who raised it now. Communities organizing themselves against forces of chaos must be supported. There's a framework in the law by Honorable which they can... Honorable MEC, may you round up? Thank you very much. Must be supported, but they must operate within the law. There must not be racial abuse. There must not be any infringement of rights of ordinary citizens. But the greater task that they are implemented must be supported. Of course, honorable members, uh, there are those who are culpable and must be held accountable. But we will not be paralyzed. We will rise beyond this. After all, we are South Africans. We are the children of Nelson Mandela. We shall overcome and I urge each of you to join in this task. This the things that unite us are far, far bigger than that which divides us. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, MEC. Your time has left. And now, Honorable Members, we are done with that debate. We are now, as we announced at the beginning, about the executive statement that was requested by the Premier. We are now going to give the Premier of the province... Uh, an opportunity to table and executive statements for 20 minutes. Honorable S. Galala, Premier. 
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Greetings and humble greetings to you, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of this August House. I wish to start by thanking you for allowing us an opportunity to make this executive statement to update the members of the legislature on what is obtaining uh, in our province currently. We do so because we believe that we should at all material time adhere to transparency and ensure that also all members are taken on board and understand the situation. We address this August House as the province is in pain and face difficulties in our young democracy since 1994 democratic breakthrough. For the past few days, our province has been under siege and in the grips of untold destruction, looting and public disorder. The damage uh, now is currently standing far above three billion. The crisis has hit genesis in the incarceration of the former president, former president Jacob Zuma. This was after the Constitutional Court found the former president guilty of the contempt of court because he, were, he had disregarded an order to appear before the State Capture Commission to answer questions. Some engaged in the protest against or for the release of the former president. But clearly, this protest got hijacked by criminal elements. What has since followed are scenes that are completely unprecedented, where crowds and crowds of people have invaded almost every major shopping mall in our province and carried out looting spree. Seen dramatic television scenes of people on foot in their cars, and some even pulling trolleys and uh, pushing trolleys, trolleys stuffed with goods of all kinds, uh, looted from the shopping centers and stores, uh, uh, storage houses. The horizon of our province has been filled with a billowing glows of smoke uh, because many of our buildings and infrastructure have been set on fire. In the first instance, at least 20 trucks were set alight and looted in Moy River. Since that fateful Wednesday, when the former president started his sentence, we also saw several marches in Guazulu Natal and in Gauteng calling for his release. To his credit, since his incarceration, former president has already approached the High Court and the Constitutional Court to secure his freedom. On Monday, the Constitutional Court heard the former president's plea for a rescission of the 15 months uh, judgment. The Constitutional Court res reserved uh, its judgment in this regard. In a period of 72 hours, practically every mall in every city and town in the province has been looted. Warehouses and storage facilities have been also looted and emptied dry. We have also witnessed water and destruction and the burning of uh, buildings and infrastructure across the province. Even medical supplies have been looted. Government buildings have also been targeted. There has also been attempt to attack the port of Deben and Richards Bay port. It is becoming clear, Honorable Speaker, that there is a coordination of this massive looting, which in our view 
may be linked to a strange grab at power. We've learned that looters are transported, and once they've looted, the building is also set on fire. It is clear that the burning of buildings is not about hunger, but another sinister agenda of sowing chaos in the society. The fires pose a danger to the surrounding communities as they may spread uncontrollably. Some of the buildings set on fire contains chemicals and paint. We stand at risk of environmental disaster caused by the burning of those buildings. We have no doubt, honorable members, that the crowd, that the crowd we have seen gathered during the looting spree have placed themselves at risk of the rampant Delta variant of COVID-19. What is at hand is to destroy all supplies and to create panic and fear in the society. Indeed, we are seeing long queues for petrol and shelves are already running empty. At the same place or at the same time, this is an encouraging criminal element to take advantage of the situation. We want to commend the law enforcement agencies for standing firm in protecting the installations of the state against this onslaught. To their credit, the law enforcement officers have done everything to protect the national key points and, by the same token, protect the country. The law enforcement agencies have protected critical infrastructure, including courts, power stations, and reservoirs. So far, about 1,086 people have been arrested and more than 79 have died, mostly from the stampede and fighting amongst themselves as looters. Uh, but this figure is, an ex ex is expected to increase. The most affected areas are in the, uh, within Umsunduze and Etewini district. Honorable Speaker, our address today is part of a process of engaging with key stakeholders in our society on this critical matter. It is a matter that affects our province and our country. It is a matter that affects us, all, all of us, regardless of politics, race, class, or religion. On Monday, we had engagement with a, a party, with political party leaders represented here in the legislature under your leadership, uh, Honorable Speaker. We also engaged the taxi industry through Santaco. We met with Economic Council. On Tuesday, we met with traditional leadership. And yesterday, we had engagement with the religious sector. And we also had another engagement with the professionals and academia. We wanted to ensure that all of us are on board on this matter. The, the emerging picture during our provincial economic council is that the estimated cost wave of destruction is yet to be known, but indications are that if we are conservative, it is around 3 billion or more. The infrastructure damage in key economic centers and especially in shopping malls, trucks, and routes such as N2 and N3. The social cost of damage might come in as a form of increased food insecurity, unemployment, and poverty in years to come. In Etewini alone, our estimated our estimate are that unrest has resulted to 15 billion worth of property being damaged loss of stock worth of about 1.4 and has placed about 150,000 jobs at risk. The unrest has created serious market distortions, which will be difficult to stabilize over the short term as the businesses struggle to recover. Most, uh, most SMMEs who rely on or who rely on current stock for capital for working capital will never recover from this looting. Indeed, this will have also a serious impact in our 
uh, uh, GDP as the country. We are quite disturbed that some of the companies, big companies that are in Guazulu Natal, have been looted. These include Simitomo, Deben, uh, uh, Dunlop Warehouse near Chesterville, Defy in Ezakeni, Pick and Pay Distribution Center, uh, the Glenwood Spa and Village in Westmead, Mega City, Bridge City, uh, Queen, Queen's Mead uh, Mall, South uh, or Scott, Scottville Mall, uh, Ittendale Mall, uh, Brookside Mall, and all shops in Watbeck were looted. We are also concerned that this has also taken place to various areas, even rural areas of KwaZulu-Natal. Having said all of this, we are working hard to ensure that we protect the government infrastructure. A number of hospitals, community health centers, and clinics across KwaZulu-Natal have been functioning on skeleton staff. We are working to ensure that this is urgently addressed through the deployment of police and the deployment of the South African of members of the SANDF. We have put forward a plan to return the situation to normalcy. Today, we had an engagement with the security cluster comprising of Minister of Defense, State Security, Police, and other agencies. We have directed all our law enforcement uh, officers to be merciless against this criminal element. We are undertaking coordinated operations across our law enforcement agencies. The situation will return to normal soon. We want to also indicate that the law enforcement agencies, including police, SANDF, RTI, and municipal police, will be undertaking coordinated operations targeted at criminal syndicates which seems to have hijacked the situation. We welcome the announcement last night by the Minister of Defense that about 20,000 soldiers will be deployed. The majority of them will come to KwaZulu-Natal. The SANTF will work in support and under the direction of the SAPS. The deployment will be su supported by Intelligence Coordinating Committee of all intelligence agencies. We are, as government, believing that we will rise from this situation, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. The motto of our crest of the province, taken from the Proverbs, or from the prophet Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18, where he, he yearned to build a city that has, that has been destroyed, will guide us as we build our community and our country. KZN will rise and we are going to build our province. This will, this will be no time for blaming game or finger pointing. We have faced a situation almost equivalent to a war and when in a war, there will be battles lost and there will be battles won. And we say this because we call on all of us to join and work together. Tomorrow, we will be having an engagement with the local uh, municipalities through the Premier's Coordinating Forum to engage on what uh, should be done in all districts and ensure that we unite the people. We call also for all of us to ensure social cohesion. We wish the former president well during or well with the matter of Recession, which is heard, or uh, which was heard by uh, the Constitutional Court last Monday, former President played a major role in, in the process of building peace and reconciliation in the province. That legacy cannot be destroyed in his name. We are aware that several communities have organized themselves into community watch groups to guard entry and exit in their neighborhood. While community have a right to defend themselves, we must, however, guard against any attempt to racialize our society. We must use this time to work together to resolve the challenges we are currently faced with, including 
racial polarization in Phoenix, people have died due to fight in the community. We, we will continue building relations with community leaders and communities and make sure that we isolate criminal elements. In our duty, it is our duty to secure and protect key economic infrastructure and our communi and communities. Working together, we can emerge uh, from this bruise, bru bruising and hardened situation, which is a crisis for all of us to build a Guazulu Natal that will be better and prosperous for all of us. We shall not fail or falter. We shall not weaken or tire. Neither the sudden shock of, of, of the battle, nor the long drawn triumphs of vigilance and extension will wear us down. Give us the tools and we will finish the jobs. And that's what we are saying. Let us work together, support each other, and deal with this situation. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Premier. Honorable members, as, as in terms of the role, after the Premier has tabled, or and a member of the Executive Council has tabled an executive statement, parties are all given three minutes each. I will start with the ACDP, Honorable S. Emanuele, three minutes. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> On behalf of the ACDP, we want to offer our heartfelt condolences to the families that lost loved ones due to the pandemic and the crisis uh, that we had in our province. Uh, it is indeed with sadness in our heart we watch our building factories, shops, supermarkets, etc., being looted and being burned. It is heartbreaking to witness our people being in such desperate situation that they had to resort to it, initially beginning with the protest due to the former president uh, Zuma, Zuma's arrest. However, the ruling party uh, is answerable to the state of the province uh, since there is a lack of resources, lack of income and poverty our people are inducing. KZN has a huge problem of inequality, poverty and unemployment, and the unrest will only worsen this. The riots are a major threat to food security, job retention and creation. We as leaders cannot pretend to be surprised by this uh, proportion. This violence uh, has reached. And reached uh, input for the past act of violence has undermined the rule of law and results in a, in a, in a visual cycle of violence. Authorities were supposed to take action immediately after these things was announced. Because these things was announced on big gatherings, uh, on, on WhatsApps, but uh, the, 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 the ruling section seems not to be ready by then. In fact, to be proactive. That's why we were caught uh, in a night like this. We also believe, Cousin, that those people who are arrested, are arrested, the perpetrators are there because it won't help us if uh, the innocent people or the people who are just immobilized, if they are only one who are arrested, then we leave the perpetrators uh, uh, behind. We must immediately restore law and order uh, uh, and the rule of law in order to ensure that uh, the, the, the criminal uh, is stopped and the justice is done. Those suspected to be responsible for the violence and looting must held accountable 
in, 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 in a fair trial. I'm sorry, speaker. Technology is cutting me here. Unless human rights are fully and effectively respected, no one will be safe in South Africa. The rule of law and human rights are two sides of the same coin, and everyone must be treated equally and held. Accountable to, be the, same, uh, to the same law. The government must uh, end this law before more lives are lost. Finally, ACDP is calling for all Christians and those who believe in God to have a, a prayer this coming Saturday, I mean Sunday, praying for our nation and for our people uh, to, to survive. God bless you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Manuele. The next speaker for three minutes is Honorable M. E. Padachi of the ATM. He is still not in the house. He will be followed by Honorable Esther Kur Rajpanzi of the Minority Front for three minutes. Honorable Takur Rajpanz. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Premier, this violence started on the 9th of July, and yet the army was only on the ground yesterday. Politically, we have acted too late. The Minority Front is not surprised but is apprehensive that every time violence breaks out in KwaZulu Natal, it ensues in communal violence against the Indian community. We are aware that communal violence, however, is used as a distraction to other sinister developments. The Indian community has been subjected to the 1949 and 1985 riots. Now this, it is established fact that the trigger to this rioting is political. Is the number 27 prophetic? Madiba said it's so easy to break down everything and destroy. The heroes are those who build peace and uh, who, who make peace and build. Today we thank our heroes in our communities. The Minority Front follows a policy of peaceful coexistence. We understand that minority rights are human rights, and the Honorable Premier Zikalala and his worship mayor Kawunda can attest to the pleas that I've made to them to intervene in the dangers of communities in Phoenix, chats with Kule and other areas have faced thus far. In Imsunduzi, the MF has interacted with the deputy mayor in matters affecting Norddale and Cobsville. The MF has called for the army to come in when we realized that SAPs couldn't eliminate the violence on the ground. Honorable Premier, I was not informed about the meeting with political leaders. Yesterday, I met community and political leaders in Newlands East who called for peace and calm. The MF will speak to anyone who speaks peace. Honorable Premier, this is a crisis. It's imperative for the government to be transparent on bigger demons of corruption and the political power crisis that our country faces. Furthermore, the MF can clearly state that the Indian community was taken by surprise when attacked and they scrambled together to protect their women and children and property. Lives were lost. The MF apologizes if any of the community's actions looked discriminatory. But we are a community who has always fought for our survival from the days of the arrival of our ancestors who were brought to the then Natal of slaves by the British to save the economy. Today, if anything, South African Indians do their best to contribute towards South Africa's development in all sectors. And we live in harmony with all our communities. Honorable Premier, the NF calls for continuous messages of calm in our communities by senior political leadership in all districts. The bottom line is to get hold of the chaos causing toolkit, which will reveal who are the third forces behind this well orchestrated anarchy in KwaZulu Natal. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Takur Rajpanzi. The next speaker for three minutes is Honorable V.R. Mlochwa of the NFP. Uh, honorable Speaker, Somlomo, three NFP, Sigutega, Sukashela, and Azo Zombili, Ukvugera Gombuso, no Jame, no Gue, 
ba isizo samazulu si isizo esakhelwe phezu kwenhlonipho nothando iqiniso lithimpi sesendeni ekuxabeni abozalo wabhupha isizwe sonke saba umlotho nathi njengoba singoso politiki kumele sizixeke thina ngokuthi abanye bethu bebekikiza bebuka umkhanya bethi igcagcele soke si nfp sithi bonke abenzi bobubi ababoshwe eh bakhalelwa amasongo kasigonyelo kodwa lokho akusona isombululo uma singenzi ukujula sibheke umsanka nomsuka wale lichilo ezinye zezinto okumele sizibheke sijubalale nohulumeni kakhongoloza okumele eh uzinuka amakhwapha kuzo izinga elikhulu longabikho kwemsebenzi intela embe kolo ukubiza kakesi nokuphatha kwa eskom izinga elikhula ngamandla lokweba nenkohlakalo uhulumeni inani elikhulu kakhulu lenje ngasebenzi ukubiza kwamanyuvesi ungalingani nendlala nobupha naku nabantu abaqeqeshiwe ngokukhulu kodwa bengaqashiwe sibonge ukuthi umongameli wezwe agcine bonile ukuthi lokhu ukubhubha okushise izinqala zizinda zakithi wabulala abantu bakithi akhiphe umgubano mayedle uba uzolekelela abe sandla somthetho uba kugcineke kungashi liphele lelizwe lakithi laseningizimu Afrika awa economic recovery plan isidinga sonke as political parties we need to be given platform and opportunity to submit our ideal plan or policies to revive the country imp nobupa akusadinge buqembu bombusazwe kudwa usidinga sonke njengabaholi bomphakathi phansi ngokusha nobusela ngiyabonga somlomo mhlanisho no um i unmuted myself nina ndi muted another remembers the next speaker for 3 minutes is the honorable av koza of the eff janisho mkatini eh ngibonge somlomo ngibingelele lo mhlangano wakho nonke nondula nkulu cha somlomo as the eff we want to take this opportunity and uh, and put the matter into its proper perspective for people to come here and pretend as if they don't know how this matter started it's been disingenuous this matter has started because people want to use state apparatus and and subvert justice just to settle political score the arrest and incarceration of uh, 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 president jacob zuma was done incorrectly it was vindictive and it was illegal as he is sitting in escort he's detained without trial we know that kosberg of naspers a white male refused to appear before zondo commission he's sitting at home we know that pw both refused to appear before the, T, the, the the trc he was given a fine and went home what purpose is the incarceration of an 80 year old going to serve this is a political problem that requires a political solution the anc should take full responsibility for what has happened and go and get its house in order number 2 it would be wrong to characterize the genuine protest of our people as hooliganism 
It was a genuine protest against an injustice. But because our people have been locked uh, under level four and level five and whatever, they are hungry, they are starving, unemployment is, has gone up. What must they do? Sit at home and eat what? Grass. It's not going to happen. Let us take responsibility as government that we've created this impasse. Instead of fast-tracking vaccination and open the country so that people can go and work, we shut down the country and we, we are surprised when our people are going out and looking for food. What we should be condemning is this vigilantism. We've created no-go areas. Instead of government, the premier and everybody condemning these whites who have closed the suburbs and, 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 and pushing our people out and these Indians that are killing black people for being at a wrong place at a long time, at a wrong time, accusing them of, of being rioters. We are here clapping hands and saying we commend them for defending themselves. Defending themselves from what? It's the greatest nonsensical thing that I've ever heard. So I'm long. What I would like to say here is that we have an opportunity. Leave what has happened. You can't reverse it. We have an opportunity, particularly for black Africans, to revisit our economy. We can't expect the enemy. You can't expect the enemy to feed you. Let us channel our resources in creating black African uh, economies. Let us ensure that whatever effort we are putting, we create, we regenerate uh, uh, black economies. Black people have been crying that markets are closed. The universe has responded. Let us buy from those black people. These white people have capitalized, monopolized markets. Let's open those Another markets problem. for black people and feed ourselves. You can't expect our enemies to feed us. Honorable Brumkatini, your time is up. Thank you, Somlo. Thank you so much. The next speaker for three minutes is the Honorable F.A. Rogers, the leader of the DA. Madam Speaker, the far past few days will reflect as a dark time in the history of KwaZulu-Natal. We've been embarrassed in the eyes of South Africa and in the rest of the world. I take this opportunity to thank all those law-abiding citizens from across our province who refrained from the anarchy, looting and civil unrest. My particular thanks go to all in our communities who legitimately took to the streets to defend their livelihoods, their families, those of their neighbours, while the government of KwaZulu-Natal failed you and your families. You are indeed our true heroes. People from all over the province, all political affiliations, all religions and all cultures, you took to the streets, whether in the form of roadblocks, street patrols, neighborhood watch groups, feeding and assisting our forces, or just to comfort a distressed neighbor. You bravely stuck up your hand to step in where the government of KwaZulu-Natal failed you. In our darkest hour, you were left to fend for yourself. Your government failed you. However, you showed true patriotism, strength and courage. I salute you, the heroes of our province. The failure of this government has destroyed your economy. It's destroyed your jobs. Madam Speaker, as the head of government, the Premier needs to hang his head in shame. In our darkest hour, the Premier deserted the people of this province. He failed to uphold his oath of office. Standing in the shadows, he watched people being killed. He watched the looting. He watched the anarchy. He watched buildings and industry being torched. He watched people's livelihoods being burnt to the ground. And he watched our economy being destroyed. Until yesterday, when he was suddenly seen assaulting a citizen, he remained in the shadows. Shame on you, Premier. Whilst you should have led from the front, you left the people of KwaZulu-Natal to fend for themselves. Premier, you have failed the people of KwaZulu-Natal. Your legacy will remain the Premier who stood in the shadows, watching KZN and our economy being destroyed. The Premier who put factionalism ahead of KZN. Take responsibility, Premier. Be accountable. Do the right thing. Step down and allow KwaZulu-Natal to an appoint an effective Premier and leader. I thank you, Madam Speaker.
The next speaker for three minutes is the Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Honorable Slavista. Honorable Leader of Opposition. Is he in the, uh, is, is the Honorable Shabisa in the House, Honorable, uh, I mean, table staff? Honorable Kuala? Honorable Kuala? Honorable members, are you able to hear me, the rest of you, so that I can take a decision? Yes, we can hear you, Somlom. Thank you. You are very much. You are very much. Thank you, Honorable members. Honorable members, for the last time, Honorable VF Kabisa, the leader of the official opposition. I have called Honorable Shabisa and there was no response, Honorable Members. Uh, I am told that he is still in the house, in the platform or not. I'm not sure now, but I can say that Honorable Gunene is on the platform who could have uh, clarified if there was an issue in terms of connectivity. Honorable Gunene, oh no, there are the members of the FPN. Honorable Shabisa is also in the house. I We'll then move to the next speaker, Honorable N. Tubengube, on behalf of the ANC for three minutes. Honorable Tubengube, is there a problem, Honorable members, with because Honorable Tuben Nobel. The whip of the ANC. Honorable Zuma is there, problem. Honorable members, am I still audible? No, we are still audible. Yes, we are audible. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Tuben Nobel. I want to go for the last time, Honorable Member. Honorable Tuben Mube. Honorable Members, I see Honorable Kaluza. I want to go. I see that you are up on what rule, ma'am? What rule, Honorable Kaluza? Uh, Honorable Speaker, I'm invoking the virtual rules of the city. The Honorable uh, Dubai Nube is having challenges with um, connectivity. IT. May I? We have then requested uh, please hold, through her. Please hold Honorable Faluza. Honorable members, Honorable Shabisa is on the phone speaking to me, saying that he is in the house, he is hearing all of us, but it seems as if we are not hearing him. He wants to speak. He is on the phone. I am asking um, IT to connect with Honorable Shabisa so that he can be connected. In the meantime, can we take a break of two minutes, Honorable Members, whilst we are here? Can we adjourn the house for two minutes? Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Talus, I will listen to you on our way on, on when we come back. Thank you, Chair. Hey.
Members, Honorable Shabisa has phoned to say, Okay, we. Honorable Kosa, Mkatin, Siazi, we are Basa Ukish. We have also acceded when the EFF had had problems with connectivity. Speak <laughs> It's just that two minutes. Hey, IT man. is an issue that they are saying. I believe your challenge is assorted. Sincere apologies on our behalf. Because any technical glitch in this platform is our full responsibility. Sincere apologies. Uh, now we are giving you your opportunity. Thank you for your patience. Honorable Speaker, the IFP denounces the looting spree and the infrastructure destruction. The executive summary by the Premier would have been better if it began with the admission that the national and provincial governments failed the people of Wazulu Natal. Capable leaders demonstrate themselves when confronted by challenges. Poor leadership, non proactiveness, and indecisive leadership over the looting spree and infrastructure destruction have costed our province yearly. Wazulu Natal is on its knees. Where were the leaders of the national and provincial government? The intelligence of our country was found sleeping on duty. Almost 25 trucks banned on entry and elsewhere exposed our intelligence badly. A country with intelligence could have detected earlier the magnitude of the looting that reached the highest proportion on Monday to Wednesday yesterday. Prince Mangosu Tukteleze made a call earlier that the army must be deployed because the SAPS will be overwhelmed. Like usual, the ANC-led national government became reluctant and dragged feet. When they realized that things are getting worse, only 2,500 soldiers were deployed for the two provinces. The IFP raised an alarm that this is a drop in the ocean. Like usual, the ANC-led government did not listen. Massive looting spree went on unabated with thin soldiers on the ground. Today, Honorable Speaker, we are told 25,000 extra soldiers are on the way, where they asleep when they send 2,500 soldiers. Honorable Speaker, the ANC-led government must admit the shame it brought to our people. The looting by criminal elements is equally the same to the looting of the state purse as the Zondo Commission is continuously exposing. Poverty, inequalities, and unemployment will double 
the blame must be placed on the doorstep of the ruling party. The executive summary by the Premier should have concluded with a call for a collective wisdom of all stakeholders, government, political leaders, business and labor, to come around the table to talk about how do we build from the ashes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable V.F. Labisa. We're now going to Honorable Dube Nube. Honorable Dube Nube. Honorable Kaluza, you were on the platform earlier on. To clarify uh, something relating to Dube Nube. Yes, Honorable, um, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Um, the Honorable LOGP is having network challenges, and uh, we are um, having an indication that her speech has been sent to um, Honorable K. I. M. Shengu of the ANC, if we can um, crave that indulgence from the Speaker. Thank you. Honorable M. Shengu. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of the House. We have lost you, sir. Honorable Mshengu. Honorable, honorable Members, uh, Chief Whip uh, of the ANC. When, when you are replacing, replaced by someone that is having stable network, Honorable Mshengu, while she was, she was, he was speaking, which I believe might be due to network activities, has just been disconnected. We are going to give you, say, to speak, uh, someone to speak from the ANC, or we move to the Premier. Network looted. Honorable Zuma, Honorable Kaluza. Honorable Speaker, may we sincerely, we sincerely apologize, Somlomo. Uh, the Honorable Nshengu is trying to connect. We do not know what happened, but he is in a stable environment. He is um, trying to reconnect. We really sincerely apologize to members of the House, uh, Somlomo, and to yourself and the Deputy Speaker. This is not acceptable. This is really not acceptable, Honorable Deputy Chief Whip. It is an embarrassment to us today, I must say it, as a House. A member that knows, we must know when is a challenge. When I look on the list of the people that are attendees a few minutes ago, I could understand then when Honorable LOGP was saying he's having a problem because she was on the platform. We have taken ownership of the challenges she might have been having. And we thought that they will be resolved with those of Honorable eh, Sabisa. But I think that the network connectivity where she was was unstable, and it is not acceptable. Honorable K. I. M. Shengu, if you are back on the platform, speak on. We are moving to the Premier now, if you do not have connectivity. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, and greetings to... Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of the House, on behalf of the African National Congress, we acknowledge the difficulties that uh, we face not only as a province but as a country, resulting from the looting spree and vandalism of property that has taken place over the past few days. We commend the intervention of government and all the attempts that have been made to quell down the situation. We are also of the firm view that, like in all other instances, the government alone will not be able to sort out the problem facing South Africa and the people of KwaZulu-Natal in particular. It is in this instance that we don't believe it is time to point fingers, but it is time to act in unison as a people and defend our destiny. It is the time where we need to avoid racial polarization. It is time where we need to put humanity 
and safety of all our people at, at, at the prime of our interventions. We continue to call on the government to ensure that it exert authority against all those who are involved in vandalism and looting of property. We also want to make a clear call to our people that it is time to stand up and claim your streets. It is time to stand up to protect your future and to protect our destiny. In the coming days, it will be a very difficult period for all of us, particularly in Wazulu Natal. The destruction of property and the, the, the destruction of economic activities will now be felt severely by all of us, particularly by those who are vulnerable, who will not have any forms and means to move around and buy whatever it is remaining in our shops. So we believe that the people of Kwazulu Natal should now really wake up and claim their streets in a manner that will safeguard that what is left. It is also upon us to unite in rebuilding the province of KwaZulu Natal. We have gone through hardships in, the, in, 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 in our country, and as a people, we have triumphed against apartheid, we have triumphed against uh, colonialism, we are on the verge of triumphing against the pandemic. It is therefore within our power to triumph against destruction and looting of property. We commend once again the interventions of the Premier and his government. Thank you. Honorable MEC, thank you. But I hope you received the sentiments that we passed. Uh, we are now calling upon the Premier for five minutes. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker. I wish to take this opportunity to thank all members who have participated uh, in this debate and contributions. I wish to also indicate that it is important that we handle this matter in a manner that is calm, sober, and uniting. It might have serious repercussions for us as the country and the province in particular if we do not handle it in a manner that provides leadership. Allow me to comment on a few issues. I think the fact that some are saying the problem is in the ANC, those who say so, I don't believe that we should ignore that point as they are saying uh, the political issues must be debated politically. That is what we are doing and will continue to do. I take note of what Honorable Koza is raising about vigilantism. On one hand, you will have those who see the emergence of vigilantism, racism, on one hand. On the other hand, you will have the likes of Honorable uh, Rogers, who will see that as not vigilantism, but as an effort of people who must protect themselves. Having said that, people must protect themselves, but within the legal means. Two, people must protect themselves not in a racialized approach. It should not be that Africans, when they enter particular areas, they will be asked permit as if it's still under uh, apartheid. If they reside in those areas, they must be treated with respect. It is appalling that there are uh, uh, outlets that are now not serving Africans in some areas. And I think those things should not be condoned at all. I think Honorable Chair, Honorable Takul uh, uh, Rajpans, we take the comment you have made and we will ensure that all stakeholders are taken on board with speed. Honorable uh, uh, Koza, uh, no, I've spoken. Honorable Mlochwa, we note your points. The issues must be addressed from the roots. I think you are correct. I think let me take one point, Honorable Chair, before I, I move toward conclusion. The issue of where was the government as raised by Honorable Rogers, I think it is unfair. When this matter was becoming a problem on, or on Wednesday, when the president, former president complied with the order, the government was there. We were all 
out speaking and trying to calm the situation. When this happened, started happening on Friday, we were all out attending to public and dealing with issues publicly. When this, uh, the, the arson or the burning of trucks happened, we requested MEC, uh, MEC Nkonyeni uh, and MEC PLA to be there and deal with the issues right from that time. So we've been all out. We've been interacting. From Monday, I was out. I left the NEC of the ANC. I didn't attend, but decided to be out and deal with this thing. And yesterday, we were out to deal with these issues. Uh, and then there comes Honorable Roger speaking about an assault without even knowing what was obtaining. On, a, on, on the ground and what was happening there. And you just speak as if we were assaulting someone. You are wrong. I don't think you should speak without facts. I don't want this debate to be polarized here because we have a responsibility to provide leadership. Honorable uh, uh, Shabisa, I think you are politicizing an issue that I believe Honorable Koza uh, characterized well. The fact that on one hand you, had, you have an anger about the arrest of the former president, on another hand you've got a challenge of the social uh, uh, of the socio-economic uh, landscape that is quite severe for Africans and blacks in general. While on the other side you those who have benefited. So you are wrong to apportion the blame. And I appreciate the wisdom in saying, let us... Yes, Honorable Speaker. Your time is up, sir. May I make one uh, sentence? It is, it is time for all of us to unite. It is time for all of us to rebuild. Let us not stand here and point fingers at each other in a way that will further divisions. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, uh, we have come to the last item on the on the order paper. I I want to seriously and profusely apologize to all Honorable Members and the parties for the glitches that we experienced with the last two speakers. I I profusely, in all humility, apologize to all of you, Honorable Members. We will ensure that we are better prepared for any eventualities technologically. But I also request parties, when such occurs to a member of your party, to assist by contacting us or else the office that is uh, responsible for the running of the, of, the, of the legislature. With that said, honorable members, I will go to the announcements. The announcement that we have is in line with the one that we made at the commencement of the sitting this morning regarding the oversight visit aimed at addressing incidences of unrest and looting that have unfolded in the province. As a result, I request members to remain connected on this link after the House has concluded its business so that they may receive a briefing on the preparations for this program, which will take place tomorrow. The chairperson of committees and the administration will conduct the briefing. We are aware that parties might not have sent their deployments so long, but uh, we want to go ahead to brief members and make them prepared for tomorrow. We had anticipated that we will finish after two. Honorable members, thank you for your participation. And now the House is adjourned until the 22nd of July, 2021. Order, Madam Speaker.
the Norway Chop Committee, so we are ready to start with the presence of members. Thank you. Honorable members, greetings. We hope everyone is here. Let us recognize every year, starting from the speaker and all other members who have a task, the lead of the official oppositions, and all members and our staff who serves in the legislature, led by Ms. Nerusha Naidu. We've got this brief agenda, which is the aim of ensuring that as the legislature, we also play a role in the midst of this pandemonium that took place in our country. The meeting is officially open. You're all welcome and you've been in the sitting. So there is no need for us just to go to deeper details. We've just held a successful sitting. Can we just go to attendance and apologies? Mshas? And uh, the apology that we have administratively is one from the secretary. She was busy engaging the letter to the auditors. Uh, however, Mr. Menela and myself are here to do the It's going to be yourself, Mshaz, who's going to give us another indication or briefing. Just make sure if you are driving, just if possible, get the right spots because there is a lot of echo. It might be because of a network or bandwidth issue. Just prefer for a strategic area. Honorable members, can we go to item three, adoption of the agenda? Honorable Sonjika, your hand is up. You are recognized. I. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Chair of Chairs. I move for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you so much. Mr. Nishwa, your hand is up. I second on all chairperson. Well, thank you so much for that. We saw Honorable Zwaga as Mrs. Swarboy hand was up. I think she just wanted to do the honors. Thank you so much, all the members you are recognized. If that has been a case, let us go to item number four. And I hopefully think the secretary will take us through. Secretary, are you the one who's assigned or you'll delegate someone? We are all yours. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. I hope I'm uh, clear and I can be heard. Uh, with your permission, Chairperson, I'm going to request Mr. Nduza to take us through the, the, the presentation and the detailed plans and I will come in the end of this one. Thank you. But there is an echo as well in your background, so I'm just thinking whether it is a reflection in the legislature when the situation comes Can you just switch it off? You... Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll try and attend to it. I'm going to hand to Mr. Nduza, please. Okay. Koboza, we hope that echo is no longer there. If that's a case of just a problem somewhere, then IT should work on it. We please try, Mshaz, it will reflect if it still persists. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I trust I'm now uh, clear. Clearer. In fact, you are crystal now. Fortunately, there is no color, but... We all agree as members that you are audible enough for everyone. I'm just teasing members because I know some might have done drama studies, so you can't say someone is crystal, not unless visually or philosophically you can see the card. Proceed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, the uh, background the members have dealt with, it as part of the debate that took place in the House. Uh, the country and uh, the province of KwaZulu-Natal has uh, uh, undergone and continues to undergo the incidences of, lo uh, of looting of shops, the damage to properties, assins, and in some unfortunate incidences, there are people that uh, have passed away. And the province, as reportedly, uh, is uh, continuing to suffer the economic losses, uh, which... Uh, as at the estimates of uh, this morning were at almost three, uh, 3 billion rand. 
we have uh, seen the deployment of uh, the SAPS and the members of the defense uh, to try and arrest the continuing uh, situation. Uh, in his uh, speech, the president uh, on Monday evening implored the legislatures, uh, especially where these incidences are taking place, uh, which is predominantly KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng, to be visible uh, on the ground in order to uh, promote stability. The regulations were subsequently uh, promulgated, uh, which are speaking specifically to interventions uh, on uh, these issues. Uh, and the Minister of Cogta uh, yesterday uh, did promulgate the regulations. The issue of uh, looting uh, is still continuing even today, and that is risking seriously the issue of uh, uh, food uh, security. The issue of traveling is being hampered to varying extents. Uh, the issue of racial tension is also coming up uh, here and there. Hence, uh, the dire need for the legislature to give leadership at this time. The program has uh, been uh, agreed to at the level of the speakership and at the level of uh, the program committee, which met this morning. And uh, the program is uh, deploying members to all the 11, to all the districts uh, in the province for the members as a collective uh, to intervene and to assess the damage and the security uh, plans that are in place. Uh, the approach is intended to be two pronged. The first one is the program that uh, will be undertaken tomorrow Friday the 16th where members uh, are currently being deployed by their parties to various uh, districts uh, for members to undertake oversight uh, on what is happening on the ground. The second one is uh, for the individual members as part of their responsibilities being leaders in the communities to engage with their constituents so that uh, we return to normalcy. Uh, as soon as possible. We are alert that uh, the regulations have been uh, 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 proclaimed yesterday and they are allowing for the exercise of oversight uh, with regards to these specific incidences. And uh, it allows for participation in uh, gatherings by members of the legislature members of parliament, councillors, leaders of political parties, religious leaders, and traditional leaders. Regulation 21 has also been amended uh, in as far as it speaks to the gatherings at community engagements hosted by the leadership uh, which I've mentioned above. And it is allowing for that for purposes of uh, encouraging return to normalcy. Uh, the date for Friday tomorrow uh, has been agreed as the date for the program. It has been noted by the program committee that we had meetings that were scheduled for tomorrow. And uh, the decision has been for those meetings to be put in abeyance, noting the gravity of the situation that must be attended to. The Office of the Chief Whip has communicated with the political parties to deploy members and in our morning meeting of the program committee, so it was agreed that by two this afternoon, the parties will have sub, uh, submitted the names to the office of the speaker. Uh, we will be adding the names to the deployment list so that uh, members are certain in terms of where they are and also where they will be going in terms of visits uh, to the various sites. There are two teams that have been established per local municipality, uh, per district, I mean, and those teams uh, will then be visiting various municipalities, the malls and shopping centers that have been affected. And some of the visits will be to the areas that have not necessarily been affected, but it is important to ensure that there are security plans 
uh, so that uh, the incidences do not extend to those areas. The departments of, com of uh, economic development and community safety have also been uh, conducted by the Office of the Speaker, as well as the municipalities. Uh, that was to ensure that uh, as members visit various uh, sites, we have the presence of the councillors, uh, the presence of the Chamber of Business uh, in those areas, as well as to ensure that when we arrive at the sites, uh, we are able to get the briefings by the members of the security that will be uh, at those sites. Uh, in terms of uh, the program outline, uh, the program is expected in each venue to last for 45 minutes, uh, which will include the, uh, the arrival, the outline of uh, the visit, the purpose, and uh, then uh, the briefing by the management of that particular center or mall or the chamber of business representative, as well as that uh, being followed by the briefing by the members of uh, the security forces or the SAPS, and members will then engage, uh, after which they will then undertake the walkabout uh, within those areas being checked. Uh, noting uh, that uh, it was not uh, uh, possible to arrange for the sit-down meetings with members of the community. Uh, for the for as part of this program, uh, members are requested that if they are members of the community that uh, are at the centres, uh, the delegations are requested to engage with those members of uh, the community, uh, address them, especially on the impact of what is happening, the incidences of looting damage to property as in, and the risk that they are posing on democracy, economy, as well as food security. Uh, after the conclusion of the program, members are then in terms of the concept expected that as leaders in their communities and constituencies, they will then continue uh, holding engagements in their constituencies uh, to ensure that uh, the members uh, of the community they are dissuaded from continuing with the incidences of looting and the unrest. Um, the office of the chief whip uh, is uh, allocating the chairpersons and whips to lead the various delegations, and the list that will circulate will be reflective of that. There has been the identification of uh, the various sites that uh, were affected as from the time that uh, the incidences started. Uh, we do need to uh, indicate honorable members that uh, the incidences are continuing. Therefore, the, the reflection in this document might not be all inclusive. There are sites that uh, are coming up as we are speaking, uh, which are not reflected in the document. And uh, it is based on that, that uh, members were then in the program committee meeting requested that they might still submit additional sites that might need to be visited. Uh, we have reflected those uh, in the, the document. We will be circulating the document. I will not be reading through it. The, we have covered the issue of participants. Uh, the risks that uh, are pertinent uh, uh, firstly, the one, the ones of uh, the filling stations. Most of the filling stations, we have been advised that uh, they have been affected, and most are not operating. Sapref has also announced that uh, they had ceased uh, operations for a while, and that has uh, also created a panic refill of fuel. As uh, things stand, where there is still fuel, there are long queues, and that is the first risk that members might not be having fuel. Uh, we have, however, through the Office of the Speaker, communicated to the municipalities, requesting that they alert us uh, of those filling stations that are still having fuel, so that you are able to circulate to honourable members. Uh, the office of the speaker has also communicated. The office of the secretary has also communicated with the, the Department of Economic Development to also source the same information. The 
situation is still not uh, settled and there are blockages on uh, blockade blo blockages on the roads uh, which might affect the movement and as uh, i was about to join the meeting i did receive a report that uh, the n3 between uh, Moy River and Harry Smith is again uh, closed, uh, which may affect especially the staff members that we have deployed to give support to the teams that will be at uh, Il, uh, Otugela and Amachuma. Uh, also, the issue of safety, we have uh, seen it as at risk, and we are requesting uh, that members uh, try as much as possible to be visible and towards that, we are requesting that they use the same decals that were issued as part of the voter education, and also uh, to be seen that it's part of the delegation of the legislature. Uh, it will be uh, useful if uh, all members of the delegations are wearing the track suits uh, that the institution has provided to members. We have also advised the staff to do the same. Uh, in terms of the consultations, uh, this is uh, the last briefing uh, in, uh, from the string of consultations that we, we had planned. We had the briefing of the strat leadership yesterday evening, followed by this morning's meeting of the program committee. We had the staff briefing at the conclusion of the program committee to try and look at the logistics. And this is the final one where we're briefing all members and uh, the delegation leaders. Uh, the issues that uh, were raised, honorable members, the risks that uh, the staff raised is that uh, there is a possibility that uh, uh, we might not be able during the course of the day tomorrow to, uh, to be able to buy something to eat. And we are also not certain if the hotels uh, where the staff that are traveling from Peter Maritzburg to put up at as well as some members uh, who will require booking if uh, there is adequate uh, food there. And we are requesting that uh, members should also uh, prepare something for themselves that might see them through the course of tomorrow. Uh, it is not a normal situation. Uh, that is a chairperson of the briefing uh, that we had prepared. And uh, in terms of uh, the uh, deployment list, I will just uh, reflect each chair. Uh, it is not uh, at this stage complete. We are still to populate uh, the, the list with uh, the names of members that have been uh, allocated by the parties. Uh, I am uh, trying to locate uh, the document chair. It's okay, locate it. <laughs> In the interim, I think, oh yes, but, but you could just forward it to members individuals teammates shall so that we can come easy and we hope that the whips of the parties will finalize everything so that tomorrow we are fine and uh, yes, in the is of the <laughs> the uh, you are now for better the magic, oh thanks i'm saying that members we are also mindful of the shortage of fuel so members might have to just communicate that on the side so that we are clinical let us not plan for three members and only one come. So it's better if we coordinate this thing and finalize it by tonight, which is why that will rely on the strength led by Chief Umsholos and his team just to make sure we are mindful and we want to be emphatic on the point raised by Babu Mshas that usually when you go to this hospitality industry, they will provide you with almost all the amenities and foods. And in this case, the when privileges, in this case, we might not have it all. So, Mshaz, I think we have dealt with it. It's fine. We don't even have to go through this one. I'll just give members who want just to partake on the discussion, not unless if there was something, because the deployment is fine. I think it's clear. No, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, nothing much to raise. Thank you. Honorable members, the platform is yours if you want just to elevate some of the things. We don't intend this meeting to be a long, boring meeting, but it just is a work in progress because we'll proceed with this. The state leadership have agreed on this, and there were some few amendments that has taken on, and let's hope.
hope and pray that it will be easy for members to implement it. I can't see any hands, all the members. No, they are Oh, there is, I think, um, cutting those, it's a No, Kuala. No, 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 is there any other hand or members that are missing? Then you can short. Yeah. No, no, no. It's wrong. It's not. When it is as well as you look at it, we will indicate more come back also in terms of uh, where uh, our, our availability is able. In that order, you can come in followed by Ushaba. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I also concur uh, with the sentiments expressed by uh, VA Cosa. No matter you could make a main late among us, whether it's for the EFF or for all of us as uh, members of the legislature. But <laughs> mine was to, was to indicate, Chair, uh, that there are some of us who. Uh, did not receive a proper uh, a matrix suit and uh, those abang awa chola ngam shamba kunga ti if I'm not wearing it as if uh, I'm not following the the rules of the game it's only that tina sa is this is a totally inkulum so at times again zanga unga shanga niga shela. So, as far as you are, the proper one. Pepe, I'm good. When I was a wolf, you are recognizing the platform. Yabonga Kakulum Tomben, no, for me, it's just a comment. Ugutika we will be available. Uh, it's only that Sige Umundo are ventilated. It's so unfortunate that we were not identified as the essentials when the whole issue of vaccination was considered. And the unfortunate part, we have to go out and work. I guess you could have a good day and not to knock me on the no fully, but your point is taken. Saba, Jamamanda, your hand was up as well. No one would have good shots. No one could see the footman. I cast a lot of Benitita, Yavumela, and I'm from the Shukwad. Otage, Econa, and in Lago Guti, Nancy, the one I give me now, Tizzy, the same who Fune got and Temple of Wasm Tolly. It's a serious, it's a serious problem. I'm just saying so that the leadership is aware that uh, some members might not turn up, not because uh, they, they do not want to participate, it's because uh, it's a real challenge on the ground. But yeah, not to say any go matrix suit to a gun or to pass nigga to put it in the gun. Gang champions, I'm sure I'm going to put in that touch as well. Put 20 liters once when you're scratch. No, no, thanks. I think I don't know whether the speaker will want to come and or the secretary because the issue of security cluster. The police in particular, there are areas, especially affluent areas, I can just assure you. If you go to Tote right now, you must be cross-examined as if you're in a court of law. If you go to Mshanga, Palito, as we speak, there are a lot of activism that might be seen very antagonistic to you. Then you will be installed by a civilian who does not even a proper social construct of how to create. And you might feel that, okay, because... This one of his color is thinking that is better, then I must also deliberate on that platform. So there are means that tomorrow let us ensure that we go with security, we identify thoroughly, and we take our roles. But for some no more, I don't know whether we want to talk now or we allow the speaker and uh, Chair, there was also a hand by Honorable Kumete. Oh, Kondlo Kwabe. Sorry that we are using the cartridge that does not reflect. Thank you, Mtombedi. Greetings to all in the house. 
uh, mine is to say, while well, tomorrow we are going with the security, we were well covered. And uh, there was also a mention of uh, visiting our constituencies thereafter and engage them. Then the question is, are we going to be issued with permits from now onwards? Is there any other hand, honorable members, that I um, might not have recognized? If not, we spoke about the issue of permits, permit as early as yesterday. I spoke to the manager, Mshaz, who promised that Ukambo was busy with it as, 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 as late as yesterday. We hope they finalize. I've not received anything from my side, but I think it's something they will deal with. Can we just give them a platform, if there are no questions, just to give us feedback of the questions raised by all the members? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much, Chairperson. It's really that I wanted to address the meeting in relation to the permits. Uh, may I indicate that in terms of the regulations that were issued uh, on Sunday, the permits that were issued to members two or three weeks ago are still valid. Maybe I'll just check with uh, Honorable Kumete if she didn't receive hers because we did issue permits when we moved to uh, level four uh, two weeks ago. But we'll uh, then be able to assist those members who may still not have them. They were issued through the Office of Members Affairs in the Office of the Chief Whip. Thanks, Chair. Mshaz, you can come in. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, we are anticipating, Chair, uh, noting that uh, we are still to receive the names, uh, that uh, if uh, the parties are deploying members uh, where there is a need for accommodation, we we are anticipating that we, we might have a, a, a bit of a challenge, but we are working together with our team uh, that is doing our booking so that uh, if a member indicates, uh, even though we might no longer be in the uh, position to do the relevant SEP requisition, uh, we will uh, have to engage the after hours uh, approach for the bookings to be made for members, uh, those that will not be deployed where they are resident or where they have uh, the constituencies. Uh, on the uh, issue of uh, the uh, security. Uh, honorable members, we have not uh, invited uh, members of the SAPS to travel together with members uh, to these sites uh, in the understanding that uh, they are already overstretched as uh, things stand. Uh, but where we will be going, uh, we know that the police have been deployed, the uh, SANDF uh, deployed, it might be a matter of uh, them having to prioritize another area at particular times when things uh, come up. Uh, but uh, we will uh, not be asking them to accompany the members of uh, the delegations. Uh, it might actually reflect bad that uh, when there are these things happening, we are saying they mu we must draw them away from where they are currently posted. And uh, Chair, I think uh, that was uh, the issue that was raised. Other than that, the issue of vaccinations, uh, we yes, uh, the legislators uh, were not uh, prioritized in terms of uh, the essential services. However, uh, as part of the staggered approach, uh, we are now having uh, to, to have registrations for those that are in the age group below 50. Uh, which uh, covers uh, a bit more uh, than we were covering uh, in the previous uh, sessions. Uh, yes, it will have been uh, desirable since members have to work with our communities to have uh, them prioritized. Uh, Chair, we will be uh, circulating the document uh, with the contact numbers of uh, the staff that are allocated so that it is easier for members to advise them that they are part of their delegations and then be briefed on the meeting points uh, that each delegation will be uh, uh, using uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Chair. 
Honorable members, are all your questions covered? This is just a briefing to give feedback of what we are thinking about tomorrow. There are no follow-up questions. If not, all members will want to close at this point in time and just mention that we are citizens before becoming members. We are duty-bound just to obey all the rules of the land, but we also have a more or extra obligation of upholding the Constitution and ensuring that where we could assist, let us assist because we ought to be selfless as members of provincial legislature, which is the legislature that creates or implements laws at the same time. So we hope all the best. We know we have spoken about the areas where it's not easy just to pass, but we must also take into cognizance that we identify those areas, come up with a solution. There is a serious joint operation from SAPS, as mentioned by Minister Andosi, and he said categorically that everyone who wants to assist in this process is more than welcome and any type of support is required. We are not the type of cohort that is more than welcome, but we are the lawmakers that must make the environment more conducive, even for subs, even for soldiers, even for metros, even for traffic officers for the joint operation, so as to make sure that this process doesn't instigate further but is at the level of being managed in a correct way. In that way, honorable members, the legislature, I think we've arrived where we can say that the meeting is officially closed if there are no announcements. Uh, we, we, uh, we do not have announcements uh, from our side, Chair. Thank you. Please ensure that you forward all the documents to honorable members so that they will sleep knowing. Honorable members, just in case you are a leader or you are part, please indicate so that we don't plan because we'll be worried when we don't see a member thinking that something bad might have happened or we didn't find the, the, the supply or the support. So if you can just highlight on time so that you are able to know the number. Thank you so much. The meeting is officially closed. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and above Hey, until we saw the car, we were I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Bye, honourable members. Bye.